There was a big hype about the EQS, but this year is the even more important electric vehicle for Mercedes, the new Mercedes EQE. So to speak, the electric E-Class, but on a very own pure electric platform, sharing it with the EQS. So, the EQE, starting here in the front, this is an option, the so-called star pattern grille. It has a little bit of reflection with the chrome stars, or oh, the tiny stars here, but really cool effect. LED light, standard option, the so-called digital light, which can also project things on the ground. So, for example, when you're turning, there could be then an arrow on the ground right here, showing you, you know, where to go. Let's say it's a step further than the augmented reality head-up display. And you also have this purely integrated design on the front. Design-wise, you can see, once again, like the EQS, this overlapping front hood right there. It's a very unique design, no doubt. And once again, also this one bow design. The length here is at 4 meters 95 or 195 inches. That means it's around 20 centimeters or 8 inches shorter than the EQS. And half of that is shorter rear overhang. And the other half is shorter wheelbase. And, well, the price will also be lower, hopefully. The EQS prices are similar like the S-Class, so we can expect that the EQE prices might be somewhat similar like the E-Class. A little bit more expensive, probably. Interesting, again, this really streamlined design right there. So kind of form follows function. The antennas, by the way, are hidden right here, just to save some more gaps. So basically integrated behind this panel. Very interesting. And, now about the trunk. This is very interesting. The EQS has this fastback opening. Here you have more headroom on the inside and you have this separate, you know, normal hatch here in the trunk like this. So this is not so practical then to load things in and out. We we'll soon take a deeper look at that, but then you have more headroom in the rear. Let's take a look at the rear design first. You can see the light strip here goes all around the vehicle. EQE 350 means this is the rear-wheel drive version, 215 kilowatt. Around six seconds will be the acceleration figure. There will also be all-wheel drive models available where you then have an electric motor in the rear plus one in the front. And yeah, probably at some point also a true AMG version. This one here, however, is the AMG line. You've maybe seen in the front. And here also in the rear, kind of diffuser style. Is this a fake exhaust graphic? Mm, maybe, ah, maybe not. I think it's okay. <laughs> so. More black, definitely this, you know, larger black panel here in the AMG line. We also have an electric art for you. Turning indicators here in the rear, not that spectacular actually. In the front, yeah, way fancier because it takes up, you know, the whole area here of the data mining light. Interesting detail, by the way, here the rear lamps looks as it would be like curled, this signature, right? So we have this gray uni color, by the way, in the AMG line. And especially in the lower left and right, you have the more aggressive styling, darker styling for these non-air intakes. Here, the so-called electric art line, this is the standard one, also has these non-fake <laughs> or yeah, non-air intakes or fake air intakes. So this is all closed, but it looks like, you know, the original air intake thing. This is a little bit less sporty. And here we also do not then have the star pattern grille, just the normal black panel. The star pattern grille, however, is not connected to AMG line or electric art. It's just a, you know option by itself. This then here in the white color. So we have a bigger contrast then to the black one. And here we also have 20 inch wheels like these. So already quite big, 19 to 21 inch span. So three different sizes. And if you take another look at the AMG line, once again, here we go. These were the 21 inch wheels. So they are definitely larger and yeah, just gives the sportier styling. So you do not have 22 inch like with the EQS, but definitely I think the 21 inch should be a nice choice here. You can also get an air suspension. Steel suspension would be standard. Air suspension is then the option. They can also combine the riding comfort with large wheels as well. Interesting also technology-wise, you will have a rear axle suspension, rear axle steering it is. So optional rear axle steering, 4.5 degrees, or optional, optional, 10 degrees. So it's not standard. EQS is standard, but here in the EQE, you have it as a first option, then the secondary option. And if you go for the 10 degrees option, then the turning circle is just at 10.7 meters. That's extremely small for such a long car. Then in the rear here with the white vehicle, you can see this is the more in a matte black paint. 
Um, so a little bit more subtle from the styling. Hmm, what about you? For me, it's definitely the AMG line today. I really would like to read your opinion in our comment section if you're okay with the design. Do you love it or do you hate it? I think it's either love or hate, there's nothing in between. And yeah, maybe I have to speak it out loud what hardly anyone else dares to say, but this car is designed in this way to appeal the Chinese market. And for a lot of the European or American tastes, therefore, a lot of people don't like the car. And me neither, design-wise, I really have to say that. I think it's a very daring design, it's a unique design. That's what I like about it. But I think it's too much focused on the Chinese market and that's why it has this really, like, you know, drop, very round design. And the total opposite we see at the moment with Audi, Yes, the Chinese market is also super important, but Audi says there, we have like a, this strong German Bauhaus design. That's who we are, and that's it. The car says, I'm German, and that's why it should be successful also somewhere else. But Mercedes really tries to move into, you know, the Chinese market as for, you know, how should the car be designed? And this might be a strategy to success because it is the most important market meanwhile but they might lose some customers in the US and in Europe for that. There's no frunk, so the only way to put in wiper fluid is right here, this separate side opening. So they really had the front hood all closed. They say the reason is because they hide the HEPA filter there because it takes so much space. Yeah, a lot of you guys would have wished a frunk both in the EQS and also in the EQE, but that's what it is. At least we have also trunk space available in the rear. Just one battery size, it's easy to remember. 90 kilowatt hours net, that is the small battery from the EQS. The bigger one is not available here, but it should still be enough. The efficiency, EQE and EQS are actually quite similar. So from our test, we had, you know, like 17 kilowatt hours on one kilometer, like 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. So we can expect more than 500 kilometers of electric range here. There's just the electric range here or more than 300 miles. The maximum figure, if you go really efficient, can even be a little bit higher. Maybe we can score like something less than 600 kilometers or you know, something less than 350 miles. We have to see. And I think overall, if you compare the market competitors, that's already quite decent. And about the recharging, AC is 11 or optional 22 kilowatt. And DC charging here up to around 175 kilowatt. However, the charging time then, the fast charging station will also be quite similar, EQE and EQS. Here for the Mercedes EQE, you can also calculate with, you know, some 30 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge then at the fast charger. This is the car key, looks quite fancy. And with the EQS or the S-Class, you sometimes have, for example, high gloss white on the inside, but here with the plain black, maybe even more subtle, so why not? When you open the vehicle or when you, you know, approach it, then the door handles fold out. However, in the EQE, these are optional, gladly, because to me, they have been so annoying with the EQS. And it's, of course, cool. You know, it's a fancy function. It looks better when they're closed and it's also a little bit better for wind efficiency, but not too much. I would go just for the standard door handles. Then you know what you get, you know what you have. So I think it's good that <laughs> Here with the EQ, EQE, they're just an option. You will also have the option of the fully automatic opening doors, by the way. Um, you know, that they automatically open when you approach the vehicle. we shown it in the EQS review. Then you also have the soft close function right here. Oh, magic. And once again, frameless doors. And you have this dual insulation right here. You see here, two glass uh, layers right there. Very interesting to see always. And inside of the doors, Animal free materials. Also here the top part is kind of like a shiny effect with Artico. There's also another Neotex material available now, so showing that soon. Then a lot of capacitive buttons all over the place. Like here, for example, for the seat heating or for the mm, seat memory, this is just one button. And mm, this one button strategy, I'm not sure if that is belonging to a premium car. Here also, formerly these buttons here could be moved now they don't give you any feedback. It's cool that you know what you're doing when you have the seat layout, but they cannot be moved and then you're not exactly sure what you're doing at this moment. And here also capacitive buttons for the side mirrors. So uh, am I too old already or 
are capacitive buttons really not that good? Tell me in the comments. Then taking a look at the interior, that looks of course super fancy here with the air vents for example. Also illuminated, look at that, nice detail work right here. Soon more about the screens, at the moment everything is turned off. And there you see it really has this one panel design in this optional hyper screen. Recently the EQS prices were revealed saying that the hyper screen is at 8,500 euros or dollars extra. So I think it will be the same for the, uh, for the EQE right here. But soon more about the screens. First of all, seating here. There are two different seats available, comfort seat and a sport seat. This is here the comfort seat, so it's a little bit more open, so to speak. The sport seat would be better in the bolstering here and also in the shoulder support. Yeah, but which is more comfortable? We have to see about it at a later stage. Interesting is that for both seats you have different materials and also a lot of animal free choices, more sustainable definitely and more animal friendly. You have a full article that looks like this. You have also a so-called no, micro cut. This is then a microfiber surface. Here the article seat by the way can also be cooled if you have the article. So this is the optional animal skin pack. So cooled leatherette seats are also available and the steering wheel can also be bought then with a full leatherette surface so the standard EQE will be animal free as for the interior materials. That's a great choice. This will be really crucial for the whole market. So yeah, Tesla did it so far with the Model 3, Model, um, with the Model Y and also with the Polestar 2, standard now animal free. This is then leading into the future. Let's see if the seat is all the way down. Now it's all the way down. So I'm 1 meter 86, 6 with 1. Still some headroom left, although this is the one with the panoramic roof. It's also a nice option and it goes really wide around the vehicle like this. Let's open it. Yeah, here we go. And I mean, sitting here in the front, it doesn't feel too much different, you know, from the EQS. Yes, the seats are a little bit different in this EQS, a little bit different seat form. Um, but when you look at the front, they of course share a lot of different um, you know, parts like the screens and so on and they also share the very same platform on the so-called skateboard they say where they can also then adapt the wheelbase. Very interesting as for the first impression definitely. Let's take a closer look. The EQ is also about new materials as I said. So here this is called Neotex and it's something in between a leatherette and the microfiber so it looks a little structured and doesn't feel entirely sleek but it's mainly sleek so to speak. A little bit like neoprene, something from the texture. Very interesting, looks really high class. And also here with the blue shade. We also have the same at the top of the insert of the doors. And this is again also all animal free. So really nice to see new premium materials. Screen, screen, screens. <laughs> Welcome to this interior then, EQE. 12.3 inch digital instruments are always standard. And then on the middle part, you would start you know, like in the S-Class or the C-Class, the new generation, with this vertical screen, either here in 11.9 inch, a little bit bigger one in 12.8 inch. That is then exactly the same in the S-Class and also in the standard EQS. And then you have this optional hyper screen, 17.7 inch and another passenger screen, also in 12.3 inch right there. Yeah, this is well, yeah, once again 8,500 euros extra or uh, almost also the same in dollars. It has this kind of curved function, but the functionality on the inside is kind of the same. So I would really stick with the base screen. It's a little bit smaller, it's more vertical. This is maybe even more distracting. You don't need this, the passenger screen on the right side. Yeah, and you can have another more, you know, more deco element here on the right side, like here in the middle part. This is like matte material, for example. However, if you want the fancy tech overkill, then this is the way to go. We soon show also details to the screens. This is by the way the Vision AVTR, the inspiration for the um, you know, new electric models by Mercedes. Here in the middle console here, once again, you can slide this one here open. Then you have two USB-C connectors and an inductive charging pad, adaptive cup holders. And this then here to start up the vehicle and to pick the different driving modes, for example. And yeah, once again, this curse of having, this is one button. Why is this one button? For design purposes? I, I you know, I did ask them and they say, it's for design and functionality. And I ask myself, no, the functionality is worse. Is the design better with high gloss black? I think not. What do you think? 
my, my favorite interior Mercedes feature is always the split opening here for the, um, you know, for the cubby hole, two USB-C connectors, and yeah, a lot of space then here on the inside. Steering wheel, either this one, and different from the S-Class or the EQS, which have this, you know, black panel slot design in the lower part. This is here more like a sportier slot design. However, the AMG line steering wheel will look different with two spokes. Here we have a rather closed area. And once again, one button fits it all. Phone, volume, slider, capacitive, left side for the cruise control. Yeah, I, I think I would just call it the capacitive curse. You can hashtag that also if you like in the, cop in the comments. Ha <laughs> hashtag capacitive curse. Made by Thomas 2021, copyrighted. So there we are. Um, I mean, it looks cool, definitely, but capacitive buttons make the user interface worse, period. The screen, however, mm, that looks quite fancy. So, and now the central screen. Ta da! I mean, the map looks really impressive for that. Whoa. Um, yeah, I mean, it also depends on how, you know, how the connection is done, the web connection, for example. The main menu looked like this. And temperature always stays here. Yeah, menu climate units definitely missing. However, as it stays at the same you know area, somewhat quite okay as for that. Um, comfort settings are always very interesting. You have massage function, and Mercedes has the best seat massage I know. Um, especially if you go like for for wave massage functions, deep wave also has this kind of vibrating in the seats. That's really cool. Of course, even more in yeah. Not sure if you can hear it on, on, on the microphone, but you have really have a small vibration in the seat. It's really cool. And yeah, my favorite ambient, light, ambient lighting. You um, also have this ambient lighting which adapts then to the driving, for example. It's really fancy. I love that. And we had nighttime um, driving episode Malibu Sunset. Awesome, right? I love it. Some say it's too much. I think it's exactly right. Go for it. Why not? Let's bring back the joy in. Uh, in driving with that to me maybe on camera it looks even more you know you know prominent it's also yeah why not so i like to drive with that thing i just love it <laughs> what about you tell me in the comments then let's take another look here at the main menu what else we can find for example here in the settings um assistant systems packed all with this car we have an active lane changing assist, so level two is actually everything ready for that. We've already shown the level three possible in the EQS. So this will also then come for the EQE at some point. And on special request, we have Android Auto integration for you here today. That's how it looks like from Jonas' smartphone. You know, I'm always using the, um, the Apple CarPlay, but here, um, oh, here we go. So there it is, that would be then the integration of that. It's really interesting and by the way here you, you really can feel the curved um, the curved surface right there. When someone took a seat on the passenger seat, thank you Jonas, <laughs> then you can also control this screen here on the passenger side and you can do the same things actually you can do in the central screen. For example here also um, sound techniques for the Burmester sound system, three surround sound, very um, nice tone definitely. Just that everything is here a little bit smaller and if you turn over here we have everything then bigger again and you can maybe do some screen fights you know controlling something from there controlling something from here again enjoy <laughs> <laughs> usually digital instruments stand like this more upright here they are lent like this and stand more towards the sun so that can catch some glare and bright sunlight we experienced that with the eqs cool here the integration of the map for example on the inside and you can have different views. You can also have the map all over the place, like this. This is really helpful, definitely. And also completely other stylings. For example, there's also a sports styling right there. Mm -hmm, interesting graphic. And you can also have a similar view for the head-up display, for example. Um, yeah, let's see about the consumption in the latest stage when we can drive the vehicle. But they're really clear to read, so quite impressive digital instruments. Hey, cool view that you can see the secondary car here with the head-up display. You can have different stylings for the head-up display, actually. Um, There's a standard styling. There's also a sports styling available, or just a minimalistic one. But the most important feature will be that you can have augmented reality arrows right there. About these door handles, I wanted to open the rear door. I was waiting for Jones to put it on the camera, but yeah, then it closed and now I'm stuck. 
Um, it, uh, yeah, so that's again why my advice is stick with the standard door handles. <laughs> Let's now take a look at the rear. Here we go. This will be a difference than to the EQS in the length, but using this electric platform, you can see it has a flat bottom in the middle part, all more, yeah, more or less flat. But definitely you can see you have a lot of space right there and also the nice frameless doors once again in the rear. You have this step in here, strangely. Cool materials at the inside of the doors once again. This looks really new, really premium. And mm, the seating position here, you have a lot of legroom. This is the seat that I would be driving with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. So a lot of legroom, definitely more than you would have in an E-Class or in a CLS. Headroom, that's the thing now. Um, you also have this glass roof then here in this option. To the side, it's really close. You see, this doesn't really fit. So I don't fit in here as a tall person. Um, you know, when I put my head to the side, but I'm sitting like this, yeah. I mean, that's okay. It's because I'm in the space in here of the panoramic roof, but that's really close. And they actually told me they went for the fixed trunk to give more headroom in the rear. So I asked myself if they would have gone for the fastback um, trunk there. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that would have, wouldn't have worked at all. This is the cost of this one bow design here, actually. And you see it also here, you know, how my knees are bent. I sit relatively low here. So do you see it on camera? I feel kind of a little bit lost, you know, in, in a way from the seating position. It's not uncomfortable, but somehow strange. You know what I mean? In the middle part, that's also really well possible. Also quite soft from the seating area. The back part is a little bit stiffer than here in the middle part, but I mean, you can still use it with five tall adults. So it doesn't have this chauffeur kind of um, uh, thing like the EQS or the S-Class, of course, but also the EQS wasn't that much chauffeur alike, more again driving yourself. In the middle part, you can put that down and have either this kind of smartphone holder or then here the cup holders like this. Isofix at the outsides each. And you also have this control unit here. Once again, one button fits it all, capacitive curse, but you have some kind of a uh, haptic feedback here. So this rear unit then I think is actually quite well to control. The cool thing about the rear interior Definitely more this glass atmosphere, looking, you know, when you look from down to the top, at the glass right here, and also look to the front, and then together with the ambient lighting, even here the ambient lighting mirroring in the top glass here, this is actually the fanciest thing here. So, yeah, this vehicle is clearly design focused. No car is safe from the dual centimeters inch measuring stick by Autogefühl. <laughs> Let's fight. So opening here, the trunk, like this. Again, no fastback opening. And the length here is yeah, a meter or 40 inches. And the width is actually less than a meter or 40 inches. Um, even a little bit narrower right here. So this rather goes like 33, 34 inches. And yeah. I mean, something a little bit more than 80 centimeters. Ooh, not too spacious. Actually, the height is actually quite okay. That's that's okay here with 21 inches. Well, it's like 53 centimeters. If I put a backpack in here, you see, that's actually no problem. So that's actually quite cool. Let's see what we have underneath. Here we go. Some more space. This could, for example, fit a charging cable since we do not have any trunk. And we can also fold the seats, but there's no mechanism from here whatsoever. So we can have a two-third, one-third split, or also just the ski hedge thing in the middle, and then loading all the things through to my front seat, we land up with 74 inches or 188 centimeters. Mercedes EQE and EQS share the platform and also the technology, so now tune into our driving review of the EQS. It will also tell a lot about what to expect with this one. And see you at our driving part with this new EQE. Everything you need to know about the upcoming VW ID bus is right here. When can you drive it yourself and when does it drive fully autonomously? 
We'll tell you all, all about it in this video. Let's take a look here. This is a prototype vehicle with a lot of different sensors. We're going in depth on that. Let's first take a look here at the design in the front. This still has a camo wrap, but you can already see the characteristic front very short as it used to be from the vintage models because this one here now, of course, is all electric battery, 77 kilowatt hours net, and also from this MEB, the modular electric building platform from the Volkswagen AG. You can see the huge retro VW logo. In this case, this is the ID Bus AD, the autonomous driving vehicle. And there we have different sensors. We have 14 cameras on the top all the way around. We have 11 radar sensors. You can see, for example, the most prominent one here in the front and lower part. They will also be heated for this vehicle so they cannot ice and maybe you know fail or something. That's very interesting. And then there are also six LiDAR available. One big one, long range, and top one. So this one looking 400 meters or 1,300 feet ahead. And then short range LiDAR, like rotary lasers, also all around the vehicle. And why is that? They want to use this one here in 2025 for autonomous driving, both in Europe and also in the US. First with a driver, later on then also when law allows it without a driver. In general about the ID bus, you can see this electric building platform is actually not a such, such a long vehicle. Look at that. This here, from here to here, in the short wheelbase version is 4 meters 70 or 185 inches. Yet the wheelbase is extremely long. You can see the very, very short overhang, both in the front and in the rear. 19 inch wheels here, by the way, but this is still then, see here the wrap around. This, by the way here, Argo is the company, both owned by, or big share by VW and Ford, which is developing the whole technology for the autonomous driving. Well, when can you drive it yourself? In 2022, early 2022, is available in the short wheelbase version in Europe to drive yourself. Then in 2023, the long wheelbase version comes for the US, then around five meters or some 197 inches. This will only be then, you know, available in the US for the long wheelbase version in 2025. Then everywhere also in these autonomous taxi buses, for example. You know, in Germany, we always call this one here, or called this one bus, not because it's a huge bus, but a small bus, so to speak. But definitely, even though it's a camera web, you, it becomes clear that it gets something of this vintage touch it had. And especially our fans in the US are so much looking forward to get this one back then, finally, in the US. Then, of course, in this case, then all electric. What about the range? Well, considering you have this battery we already know, hmm, it is basically passenger based, not commercial vehicle based. We can maybe expect some 400 kilometers or 250 miles. Of course, at a later stage, we'll find out more about that. What is kind of clear also in the side profile, you have the sensors here also in the side, here also the side lighter. So for example, when you approach the vehicle and maybe you, you hold it with your smartphone, that the car actually knows you are here and you're not overrun by the vehicle, for example. The side profile as we know it, form follows function, classical box design and once again you can see here the very very short overhang in the rear. Recharging as we know from the current MEB platform has a peak of 125 kilowatt. We'll see if that one is developing over time and good news as for the battery and as for the range for the long wheelbase version there will be a bigger battery available. The final figures are not out there yet but if you stay subscribed, we'll keep you updated on the final figures, both for the short wheelbase and for the long wheelbase version. So that we can also calculate with a little bit more range for the long version that is then to come, for example, for the US market. But of course, you can also order it in the European market. And now to the rear, we can see this typical box design, but we will have more than tail lamps, more in this horizontal way and actually, you know, really slim. And of course, the very low loading sill that you can easily get things in and out. Especially here, the autonomous driving vehicle it has another LiDAR here in the rear. This is then a short range camera just for the area right there and more radar sensors right here. These then also cover a longer range. So very interesting concept, definitely. But you can already see, although there's the camera wrap, how the basic dimensions will be. Technology wise, what's also interesting, this building platform here is rear-wheel drive. So the base version will also be rear-wheel drive. So 
you might have a sporty driving feeling for this kind of micro bus and you remember that the battery sits in the bottom of the vehicle so low center of gravity plus rear wheel drive usually results in a sporty driving experience you will also have an all-wheel drive version so that adds another electric motor in the front and you know from the id4 for example there is this gtx version so that will be somewhat similar if it will be called gtx hmm, who knows but so to speak, we will have a performance ID bus right there. That might be interesting for you, won't it? The interior is not finished at all and actually it was off limits, but for you we could negotiate a short glimpse and actually my impression when sitting here. So it's not the longest bus or micro bus then, as you say in the US. It has rather a Tiguan length, but actually you can see when I stretch my arms, I, I cannot touch the front windscreen because it's actually quite wide here although it is a short overhang so you have a very spacious feeling because this module electric building platform is really using the interior space due to the long wheelbase the interior here is also not finished at all it's also covered here you can see and you will of course have a modern infotainment system just like you see in the id3 or id4 models something like that you have the upright seating position as you know and this also gives you some long-term comfort and of course way more than enough headroom with 1 meters 86 or 601. Another advantage for these electric vehicles is you have just relatively tiny electric motors comparing them to the combustion engines. So even if you have the all-wheel drive version with the electric motor additionally in the front, you have just larger wheel house so that the wheels can turn way more to left and right. So that results in a very narrow turning circle, important for the autonomous driving vehicle especially in inner cities, but also for yourself when easing this car in and out of your parking lot for your family, for example. So I would like to hear from you guys. Would you rather drive it yourself or would you like to be driven? Maybe not to, uh, you know, no need to find a parking spot in the city or something like this. And of course, you can also tune into other videos from us like the Volkswagen T7, the combustion engine or PHEV version. They are not related platform wise but still somewhat related usage-wise. And of course, one of the main competitors, the Mercedes V-Class right there. Hope you enjoyed this insight for today. See you next time. This one here behind me is a future small electric Volkswagen. It's called ID Life, but probably will end up being called ID One or ID Two, depending on the shape. So they are planning for an ID One in the Polo size and an ID Two of a T-Cross size, more like a SUV. So this one, 58 kilowatt hour battery, means 400 kilometers or 250 miles of range. You know the ID Three is available also with a bigger battery, but since this one is a smaller car it can reach the similar figures then with a smaller battery and you can see here the retro styling rectangular styling in the front nice retro logo big one illuminate in the front if this one will be loud in germany not sure in the us probably yes but then again such small vehicles might not come to the us at all or do you want such a small volkswagen in the us then put it in the comments. You can see this does not have a real exterior paint. They use wooden pellets to give a natural coloring. So they use less chemicals for the paint, so to speak. So no traditional paint to be even more sustainable. And this also a theme about this vehicle. They want to improve sustainability even further now. And this is of course a very good and likable approach for for this vehicle. Well, I like that this, they finally went for the retro design. I hope it will stay this way because the ID3 is not kind of this retro design. This one is now an even more rectangular. Really love the design looks in the front. What do you think? Shall they bring this car into production? Of course, now let's take a look at more details. Four meters and 10 or 161 inches is the length here. And you can see interesting shoulder and the paintwork itself. It really feels very interesting. So I love this new approach. The roof, by the way, and the um, top front. This is made from PET bottles. It looks kind of soft, actually. Um, yeah, not sure if this one will come to into production. Um, yeah, maybe like a convertible roof or something. Thing. That's very interesting. Impressive C pillar here as well. So the car overall is very, very short, but will have actually space in the interior of a compact vehicle. Acceleration figure around 6.9 seconds from around 230 horsepower. But interesting is so far the MEB, the modular electric building platform, has rear wheel drive. This one here, however, will be planned as a front wheel driven vehicle. So also looking forward to test drive that, of course, when it comes into a final production stage and also for the final naming. 
Even more interesting, by the way, the rear. So the same light scheme we saw in the front will also happen here in the rear, where we have, you know, basically this seamlessly integrated layer and the lights are behind it. This looks really, really fancy. And the same VW logo we had in the bright scheme in the front is then here in the red scheme in the rear. Top speed is planned for 180 kilometers or 112 miles an hour. But even more interesting is the pricing. This one is supposed to hit the market in 2025 for around 20,000 euros. And this, of course, would be a game changer to have really a, an affordable small EV on the market from a mass manufacturer. Taking a look at the interior now, a lounge atmosphere already in the rear and we see a lot of fabric materials or there's microfiber surfaces, also animal free and you know, really nice here also than the matte wood touch. So that looks rather living room alike and also a high floor mat right there. This kind of Rolls Royce style. And also, once again, theme about this one, recycled materials, reusing things, less chemicals, and so on and so on. Here also with a nice fabric inset at the inset of the doors, next to capacitive buttons here, for example, for the window levers. And this whole vehicle has frameless doors. You can see it right here. Not sure if this one will come into reality, but very interesting approach nevertheless. And here you can also see at the inset of the doors, look at that, this non-paint I would call it that way also goes through the inside and hardly ever have we seen such a concept and I think it's really impressive and why not I mean it's kind of like a white structured vehicle looks a little bit ceramic alike or something but definitely for a change why not it looks really fancy I think here now the front interior with this joke <laughs> or yoke steering wheel <laughs> Is it joke or yoke? <laughs> yeah, it depends on the definition, I guess. Like Tesla, we've seen that, and um, yeah, very interesting. They also went for that. And even more interesting is, you can see you have this projection there in the front. This is a cinema on the inside, and you can actually also fold the front seats all the way to the, you know, to the front, and then you have this lounge atmosphere, or have a two meters interior, or 78 inches two meters or 78 inches long and on the interior or you can maybe make a big cargo area out of it in another version so this also leaves you a lot of possibilities oh lower part again this uh, pause and play buttons for the for the throttle and for the brake we've seen also with the ID3 very interesting and funny ideas so it is kind of reduced to the max this interior and I think it's a very interesting approach they're making this car either to a cinema or you know, of course, with the gaming console, for example, when you have some controllers, or maybe use the steering wheel or something. So, definitely two very important things about this car. Reduction in the design, that goes more in the Tesla direction, but also about the entry price, this 20,000 euros or dollars, that will be the game changer. So, of course, it's a concept car so far, but if this one here comes close to an ID2 or ID1, I think it could really be a game changer for the EV market. Oh, and by the way, the wheels, 20 inch, so quite massive for such a small vehicle. But since you have this rather prominent rectangular design, the wheels don't look too big at all. Interesting. Well, and indeed it is a convertible. So if you pull these zippers here, you can actually also remove the top. Here's it in a very manual way, just to have a little bit more fun. And by the way, you see here this, you know, the projection. It can, of course, be retracted. Then the dashboard goes down. You'll have a head-up display. And in the middle part, you will not have an infotainment system, but just you put your smartphone. And yeah, well, sometimes I thought about that. You say, uh, you know, Google Maps is the best service most of the time anyway. You just put your smartphone there. Everyone does that. So you could also think about, hey, let's reduce to the max. Don't spend billions in infotainment systems that are slower than your smartphone anyway and just use your smartphone. This is also this minimalistic concept we see here, especially, in, of course, when this cinematic screen there is retracted. The already existing EVs by Volkswagen are the ID3 and the ID4. See at these videos. This is the all new generation of the Kia Sportage. We'll tell you all you need to know about the long wheelbase and the short wheelbase version for the different markets worldwide. Let's start here in the front. This is the new GT line, the sporty design package. And it has here the special front grille. But in general, the new styling is really massive, very strong. The top part here, kind of closed, but then here, once again, really open in the lower area. Also very 
prominent, the new LED daytime running light. The main headlamp unit starts with LED and optional, the matrix LED. Experience Green is this very special new color, by the way. And you also see here the new Kia logo. So they have completely changed the whole brand design. Around five inches or around 14 centimeters is the length difference from the short wheelbase to the long wheelbase version, splitting in the wheelbase and here the C pillar. This is here the European version at 4 meters 51 or 178 inches. And the version for Asian and the American market is 4 meters 66 or 183 inches. So not too big of a difference, but the styling deals are different. The European version gets this contrasting black roof as an option exclusively. And here the window graphic then is different. And also the C pillar would be just longer in the US and the Korean version, for example. Interesting, by the way, this split here. So their new design philosophy explicitly works with contrasts. I usually find design better when it's more fluent and, you know, easy, but they also want to arouse attention with contrasts like these, where it's really like, you know, going in the opposite way. Very interesting. The GT line also features the painted wheel arches right there. These are also dark 18 inch wheels. The wheel sizes go from 17 to 19 inch, so they are even bigger ones available. In general, you can see a rather sporty approach for the side and rather fluent design lines in the front part. Also, once again, for the front wheel arch, we have it in paint again, the base version, you would just get with the normal black wheel arches. And here also in the GT line, the contrasting mirror caps also in black. So you see they are actually playing around a little bit and then especially here towards the rear, even more stressed in by this black roof contrast we see here. There is also a new distinctive design for the rear. Look at these curved forms here and then very modern tail lamps right there. And some contrasting elements, for example, here and this off-road diffuser kind of style. And gladly, we have no fake exhaust whatsoever. Suspension-wise, by the way, you start with the base suspension and optionally you can get an ECS, electronically controlled suspension. So an adaptive suspension is also available. What do you think about design here? Tell me in the comments. This is the car key and it also features this remote parking function. We know it from our recent Genesis reviews or the Ionic, Hyundai Ionic reviews. Of course, Kia, Hyundai and Genesis, all the same cooperation and therefore they also share these features. You can also press it here for keyless entry and door closing sound. Very solid. Yes, sometimes it's beeping, <laughs> but that's normal. It's a prototype vehicle, so it also beeps from time to time. Then here, top part here, soft touch. Then you have a nice microfiber insert here in the GT line and even softer than here for your elbow. There's an optional Harman Kardon sound system. And here my favorite feature, look at that. Really nice design here for the door handles. Not sure if they're practical, but they look awesome. Then the GT line also features this special steering wheel, flat bottom, GT line badge. You have pretty simple and old school controls here for the steering wheel, but I really like to have them because we see so many, you know, capacitive BS nowadays that it's good to have a volume control with a real button at the steering wheel on the right side and rather for the cruise control. This is the, you know, a cool option or standard in the GT line, this curved display two displays, left and right, 12.3 inch. Standard or small, smaller trim levels would be a smaller screen than actually, but this is then, you know, the, actually the most prominent option. Also interesting how the air vents are newly integrated right here. And the seats said to be just a, it's kind of sporty, I would say, because it looks already sporty. And here it has some microfiber inserts and then also leatherette is being used. And as my information goes so far, this is here also an animal-free seat. So also Kia going in this direction, especially also with the new electric vehicle, the EV6, for example. So pretty cool first impression. Let's get inside. And yeah, it's actually quite plush, but you already have an you know, elaborated seating position. So you feel like you would be in a proper SUV. Doesn't feel small at all. The steering wheel up, down, in and out. Here the store columns move alongside, but again, it's a prototype vehicle. We'll check again in our final review then when we can drive the car. Of course, stay tuned for that and always stay subscribed for all the driving reviews. Then electric seat up and down, like this. 
the electric motors are actually also quite fast. And what about the space here? There is the panoramic roof in here, 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. It's still a lot of headroom left, no problem. What is quite cool, there are two features actually, actually here in this vehicle that are really fast. And you can open this panoramic roof like this. It's really wide, goes all the way across. And now it gets really interesting because this is the first feature. Look at that, how fast the cover for the sunroof is. Sometimes we have vehicles which are, you know, like really slow and that, that but look at that, that's like, I think it's the fastest sunroof cover I've ever seen. And the second fast thing is to come up right now. And here it is, either open space or cup holders in. And now maybe we need, need slow-mo. Whoa, 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 whoa. There we are <laughs> with the cup holders. Okay, once more. Jonas, wanna, wanna put the slow-mo on? Attention. <laughs> Interior overview, really impressive with this curved screen. I'm not sure if it appears on camera because this is 2D, but my eyes are, you know, watching 3D and this is really curved and yeah, the same way, by the way, in the EV6. So this is very interesting technology transfer and yeah, probably a very interesting option to go for or stand when you have the GT line. Soon more details to each of these screens here, 12 and 3 inch. Here the steering wheel, oh, it looks very sophisticated. Also the materials they're, they're using and also real metal here on the inside. So this makes a good impression. Again, classic buttons, but really glad to have them that you can control them while driving. Also for the cruise control, no capacitive BS, really, really good. Then what's also interesting before we come to the screens here, this lower unit. So it's a mix. You have like touch here for the vent strength, but you still have a manual dial then for the temperature. And I'm really glad as well that we still have that. So I think this is good user interface that they still use some classic elements right there. And you can also switch this one. So at the moment it's for temperature left and right here like this, or so you can now sync it again. And when you hit this button, then you have some more hotkeys right here and you have this as a manual volume jog and on the right side for tune. It's an interesting idea. Yes, not sure if you will reuse really that while driving. I mean, you also have the volume control on the steering wheel. Still, it's good to have a volume knob. That way they go like, you know, a mixed way. They reduce the amount of buttons and then you still have the possibility at least, I would probably leave it on the temperature, but at least you have the possibility and interesting. A lot of black piano like I use here. I would tend to reduce that. When you open that, you have USB chargers. This will also be USB-C when, um, when you get the car in the showroom. Heated steering wheel and heated seats. Again, with separate rear buttons. Yes, please, we need that. And other manufacturers watch and learn. If you put everything in a touchscreen, it maybe looks fancier, but it's not practical while driving especially. The driving selector here, those from Jack or Land Rover or, uh, you know, they have actually introduced that first and Ford has that. Now also um, with Genesis, for example, uh, but here also with Kia. So yeah, why not? And here this is selector for the driving modes. When you have the optional adaptive suspension and then go for a sport mode, it will be stiffer than, for example, suspension wise. Then we have the armrest, the leather red cover. The attachment could be a little bit better, but again, at the moment, prototype stage. Here, a lot of space underneath the usage of interior space. So far, really good. Fancy digital instruments indeed, and you can change the schemes here. For example, a more classic view, or like this, or maybe like this. And this one, of course, the most fancy one. And by the way, if you use the turning indicators, there will also then be a camera right here, a camera view from the side mirrors, like we've seen in our recent Genesis reviews, that you have a blind spot camera basically in the digital instruments. That one will be available when you go for the 360 degrees camera package. Infotainment screen up close, works here via touch. And let's take a look at the climate menu. So usually you would just control it from, from below, but you can also do it in the touch screen like this. Again, main menu, and let's take a look at the map. So um, this is something, I'm not sure why they're still using this kind of, you know, system where it got this hook here. Um, yeah, so there are definitely better infotainment system maps here out there basically does the job. The alternative would be using the Apple CarPlay, and there we go. 
nice integration all the way over the screen so that works very well and let's listen to this sound system and we have here the Harman Kahn sound system and that's actually a very nice true surround and you can also recommend a song yeah by the time you bought the still CDs and then you were allowed to rip it <laughs> on the rear doors we have hard pack material We'll see about that in the final vehicle at the later stage. But here on the back seats, you also have the same styling as in the front seat. And it's also a very plush atmosphere. Legroom wise, of course, you know, the dimensions in the EU version have not changed much. But here then, still some legroom left if the tall driver is driving. This would then be a difference to the Korean or the American version, then you have a little bit more legroom. Here also very interesting hanger here for, for the jackets. So integrated in the head restraint, that's an interesting idea. And also the headroom in the rear, of course with the panoramic roof that gets closed, but for me it works. If you want more headroom in the rear, then leave out the panoramic roof. You can also adjust the angle of the back seats like this, more upright or more than sleeping position. <laughs> and then here, cup holders they are not adaptive but they are at least not that shallow there we go an interesting spot here for the usb chargers in the rear this will be you know updated material later on in the final vehicle and also there will be more usb c chargers in the final vehicle when it's not prototype anymore you may know it from the platform brother the hyundai twos and that there's also the function that you stand here with the key in your pocket and the hatch opens automatically. That's of course a very practical function. Here the electric hatch then in general can also be opened with the button below. And then we have 590 liters for the EU version and some 50 liters more for the long wheelbase version. Here very nicely done with the rails left and right for that cover. And you can see here the backpack fits in easily. The width is at a meter of 40 inches and here the length 34 inches or 85 centimeters. Overall, very well usable square dimensions. Underneath here, there's some more space. Only if you have the plug-in hybrid version that is coming up, then you will not have this additional space right there. You can also fold the seats from here, like this and this, and you see they easily fold, yeah, almost flat from here. So they have a lot of space. And let's see if you want to transport some furniture or something. Um, yeah, let's take it that way. So it's about 67 inches or 170 centimeters. Overall, well usable. Engines, front wheel drive or all wheel drive. And it's easy to remember, always 1.6 liter four cylinders. One diesel available, then there's one pure petrol engine, at least, well, some mild hybrid technology. Then there's an inbuilt petrol hybrid, the one you can see right here. This then already has some 230 horsepower system output. And then there's a plug-in hybrid, 265 horsepower, and at least some 40 kilometers or 25 miles of pure electric range. They promise, of course, a little bit more, but I'm talking like realistic range. So interesting that they have mild hybrid, inbuilt hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and then next to that still the diesel. Pure electric, that's then the task rather of the Kia EV6, which is somewhat then size-wise in the same segment. Of course, not a true SUV then, for sure. Do the competitors need to be afraid now of the new Kia Sportage, like the VW Tiguan or the Mazda CX-5? Click these videos and I would say they rather should be. This is the all new generation of the Astra, a fierce competitor of the VW Golf, both especially in Germany and the UK. Vauxhall and Opel here in the Opel trim because we're today in Rüsselsheim, Germany, where this vehicle is also built for the worldwide markets. And you can see here the all new Astra has this new Opel visor, so called. So basically, one Stormtrooper trim. And also, you can get the Opel logo in black for a more sinister look. The lamps more integrated. LED as standard, optional and matrix LED, which you can also see right here now, or pixel light as Opel calls it. 84 single LED per side each. This is the ultimate trim, so a high trim level and also in this golden color, you can see a more elegant appearance. We will also soon show you the Sportia GS line as a comparison. As for the length and dimensions, they haven't changed that much, but design-wise definitely. Also here, for example, you can see, you see this yeah, kind of middle power dome forming the so-called Opel Compass, a new design scheme they use. In the length, 
4 meter 37 or 172 inches. These are the optional bigger 18 inch wheels for a sporty look. Cool styling, definitely. And you can also now get not only here the contrasting mirror caps, but also a contrasting roof in black. But if you like or prefer, you can also stay just with the Unicolor. And um, if you compare it, for example, to the Toyota contrasting roof here, this one here is way better painted. There is a very soft transition right here between the two colors, so you cannot even feel it. That is very well done how two-tone paints should be. Also your sporty design clues, look at that, you know, reminding us also of past Opals or sports cars, very interesting. There will be an all-electric version available and also plug-in hybrid, the one you can see here now, but also normal combustion engines, soon more deals to that. First of all, in the rear, once again, very modern design as for the tail lamps right here, really horizontally drawn. And once again, you can get the Opal logo in black and the big Astra lettering. We see a lot of these big letterings here recently in, in the automotive industry. And is there any fake exhaust traffic? No, a very clean design here also with some black contrast here. Overall, I have to th say, this is a very, very clean design for this compact hatch. What's your first impression? Tell me in the comments. Heading towards the interior, there is no episode here on Autogefühl with Thomas without the famous door closing sound test. And that sounds very solid. Nice. Then inside of the doors, here we have a high trim, some microfiber, really soft, that's also nice. Also soft touch on top end, and also a very interesting structure here. That is very well done. Here, however, the rest for your elbow, is soft, but it should be a little bit softer, I think, for long journeys. Then some piano lacquer here. That's maybe not that good, but we still have menu controls here, for example, for the side mirrors. Of course, then rather hard back and lower part to be a little bit more sturdy. This is the ultimate trim level, one of the high trim levels next to the GS line. And completely new steering wheel, which also shows this Opel Compass, you know, like this you know, straight graphic right there. Very interesting and modern style, definitely. Very thick here, very slim in the lower part. The base version would start with PU if you want it animal free, if you want the more you know, elaborate assistance systems features like with capacitive steering wheel for the cruise control and so on, then you have to go for the animal skin wrap. Zoom to the screens. This is the so-called pure panel, an optional two times 10 inch. You always start with two times 10 inch, but then it's like a you know, not covered in this glass and so on, so it looks a little bit more bezel-like. Soon more details to that. As for the seats, you have a comfort seat or a sport seat. This is the sport seat, and it also has the AGR option for more adjustability, and this is also the optional animal skin pack. However, the base seats would start with fabric each, and then you can also get Alcantara here on the inside and leather on the outside if you want it animal-free. So there are at least enough choices available. Let's get inside. And as for the base form of the seat, this is a compact hatch. And the ergonomics of the seat, first impression is actually quite good. Of course, when we drive the car very soon, we'll keep you updated as for the driving performance and also the comfort of the seat. But the first impression, really good and also a lot, of, lot to be adjusted. Lumbar support is right there, two memory functions, front, up, down all electric, then in this case, the base would start manual. You can also put this lower area a little bit longer right there. And they now use a lower seating position, and indeed, it feels kind of sporty, also with that steering wheel. And here, headroom with 1.86, 6.1, foot one, plenty of that left. And you know, they are inside the Stellantis Corporation now, so not only PSA, so Peugeot, Citroën, Opel and all the Fiat brands, they are all now under one same roof. And Opel rather takes the more German sportier position in that one, also if compared to the to the French in-house competitors. I already see an optional head-up display, so we take a deal look at that. Would say, let's join me for the cockpit. Now you can see this pure panel, two times 10 inch screens. This here you know, the more elaborate function with a magnesium carrier behind and glass in the front. The base version would look a little bit less sophisticated actually, but you still would get 10 inch screens from left and right. So then depends if you really want to pay that option for that. Then you can also see the, um, you know, the adjustments here for the, for the vents, like here here you first have to find them a little bit more integrated so to speak what is really cool we have a lot of touch stuff here 
Yes, but we still have, for example, buttons here, seat heating, seat cooling, heated steering wheel. This also gives a feedback, although it's one field. And then separate climate knobs here still, warm and colder, great to have them. And also here, a separate volume knob. This one stays still, the top part, it's then the ring behind it. Um, yeah, interesting. I would rather prefer turning the whole thing, actually. But good to have still the menu controls. This is where Opel goes a little bit more in the conservative way, but in this case, conservative is better because that's what we need and you want to control it while driving. The vents here, however, and then also the lower area here with this cover, this has rather a cheap impression also here for the cup holders and so on. So not sure, this is of course prototype stage still, a very early stage. So we'll keep you updated if that is being changed when we drive the car then. And in the top here in the lower part, this looks USB-A, but it is already USB-C. <laughs> but they took the, you know, the surrounding here from the USB-A still. But there's also inductive charging pad then in the lower part. Apple CarPlay and Auto not working here yet in the prototype stage, but also wireless availability. Then shift by wire, shifting lever, so a very small shifting lever. This reminds us also of the new VW Golf 8 and driving mode selector right here if you want to go sports mode or the pure electric mode in this hybrid engine, for example. And then some more cabrioles here and all also this split armrest. The screen, by the way, changes the color according to the driving mode. When I'm in the sport mode, it switches to red, what we don't see right now because it's not, now it's working. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was kind of a moderation. So um, yeah, a little bit lagging behind here now, um, but as I said, the software is not on the, you know, best standard here for the show vehicle. Here you can also tune into the climate control in the in the infotainment system and then you say oh i'm lost and use the three finger skill here to always get back to the hidden main menu otherwise you you know you can also use this home button right there or like this but i mean the three finger tip is always good to have this kind of overview i would prefer that overall yeah you see it's not that responsive yet it's better than before also has a wider area here today at the opel plant in rüsselsheim germany so it's not an infotainment system where i would immediately say like oh this really convinces me you know the thing you know, today with tesla and also with the google-based polestar system for example everything else just looks cheap that's the way it is and all the manufacturers have to deal with it the digital instruments are clear to read there's no analog anymore whatsoever this being the plug-in hybrid here 56 kilometers of range pure electric range in this case then so yeah some 30 miles or something and the big speed here you can also adjust it later at the moment it's still also in the prototype stage sorry for that and this is the housing for the optional head-up display at the moment we cannot show it to you but we will of course soon when we drive the vehicle and i also wonder if the steering wheel adjustment stays this way when you set it loose and then just hold it down and do not fix it immediately. So, Opel engineers, I'll check out very soon with the final vehicle if this stays that way. The front seats are very thick and set on comfort. So, yeah, and they also have not really, yeah, just slightly increased the rear base. So there's hardly space for your knees in the rear. So this is rather a small compact vehicle. Let's take it that way. And yeah, leg room in the rear is not really existent. It's rather like in some of the small segment vehicles, actually. So um, when you have the base seats, you will have a little bit more leg room, though and hard pack materials at the inside of the doors. But the seating position itself, actually, when you would have shorter legs than I do, this is actually quite comfortable and ergonomic. So you have to be just short leg-wise, because headroom-wise, this is actually no problem at all. And then we have here the armrest with some adaptive cup holders right there. And in the middle part, one more USB-C charger, and also, when you have that option, three-level seat heating for the rear seats. 422 up to 1,250 liters is the trunk capacity. Let's take a look right here. The normal length is here, yeah, 29 inches, 73 centimeters. The width, yeah, this is like a good standard, one meter or 40 inches. And the height below the cover right here, 15 inches or almost 40 centimeters. The total height right here, about 24 inches, 60 centimeters. And below here, we have the battery 
for the plug-in hybrid, so it will be a little bit different than in the pure combustion engine versions, but here you have an even loading sill. Not too large actually, but still, you know, nice from dimension how they cut it out here. Have you seen that here, by the way? Again, once again here, the folding Opel logo. We know it from Volkswagen, but yeah, it looks quite fancy. This then here, um, when you have the combustion engine, the pure combustion engine, then you have another cubby space underneath in the trunk, so you can use it for whatever, or then you can take this one out, of course, completely, and then you have overall a little bit higher. And we also have a different color for you today. Here, the GS line in red. So when you take a look at the Ultimate and GS line, not too many differences. In the GS line, you always get the black Opel logo here, for example. When you would have, would have had it in bright, it, of course, appears a little bit you know, more elegant. This way, the sporty look, definitely. In red, it works also very well, this new vehicle here, with a very clean design overall. I like that. 18-inch wheels here also, the optional ones. And of course, you can start with smaller wheels, have a little bit more comfort then. As for the chassis, by the way, 15% higher torsional rigidity now, and talking about torsion, in the rear axle, they still use a torsion beam. So there, for example, the competitors with an adaptive suspension and also option more elaborated rear axle might have an advantage. We'll, however, see how that one plays out then when we can later drive that vehicle. And here with this vehicle, the GS line on the interior, we can see the Alcantara seats. Alcantara on the middle part, and then the outside is also a little red. So the product manager said that one is then animal free. That looks also quite fancy. It looks even more elegant, actually, more premium than the animal skin seat. And let me, let me take a seat actually to compare the comfort. Of course, this one brings you more climate comfort because it will stay cooler in summertime and warmer in winter and indeed it's a little bit cozier and also you don't slide on it that much. And when you have that Alcantara package you also have it in the rear, same styling that looks cool. And in this funny seat box here we can show you how a lower trim would look like which to me looks higher trim because these fabric seats here in the gray styling are actually super cool. I mean I would definitely all the time would go for these. I mean that looks fancy and also feels very nice and this is you know, not available yet here, the microfiber steering wheel, which looks super fancy and racy. They are working on something like this to offer a full animal free interior. And this could be one solution. I really hope they would go for that to offer that. If you also like it, put it in the comments. And this, by the way, also how the manual gearbox then looks in the vehicle. Not 100% final maybe, but yeah, that you get a glimpse of how a lower trim version could look like. Yeah, to me, definitely way to go. As for engines, let's start the other way around. There will be in 2022 an all-electric version, the Astra E. Soon more deals to that here also on our channel. Then you'll already have a plug-in hybrid, 180 or 225 horsepower from a 1.6 liter turbo petrol engine, plus then the electric drive, all powering the front wheels. And then the pure combustion engines, 1.5 liter diesel, 130 horsepower, or then here, this three-cylinder turbo petrol engine, 1.2 liter with 110 or 130 horsepower. Here we have a great opportunity to show you the heritage of the compact Opel model, starting with the Cadet 1936. The Cadet was actually then the pre-name before the Astra came. This then the next Cadet generation, a little bit more boxy style, definitely here towards the 60s or 70s. You can always see the, um, the year in the background. This one also a very famous one, the Cadet C, actually with this you know, overlapping front here like the Manta had, a very sporty design at that point. Then you see it kind of changed to a more you know, practical design here with the Cadet D, and design got a little bit more roundish, like here. This to me here, the, probably the ugliest model in the lineup. I really like the Cadet C, for example, with, you know, with sporty and overlapping front and so on. The Astra F was extremely popular, and I also know it from my generation. You know, a lot of good friends had these ones, for example, as first vehicle, as a used one, and they ran actually quite well. Then the Astra G with this kind of, you know, mix of hatch and uh, sedan style. It was a very interesting design approach. And then one of the most liked models was here, the Astra H, which really had a sporty design. Here, of course, in the sporty trim, but this one was really loved, especially by young drivers. Further on, the Astra J. They did not go for an Astra I, by the way, because when you say like E in Germany, it's like, oh, like E in Germany. Therefore, they left out this 
um, you know, this letter and, you know, therefore it's H, J, K, this one then, <laughs> the Astra K, the previous generation from the new one, which already went again, you know, in the more streamlined visual uh, appearance. So very interesting to see this actually and well glimpse of the future could be the manta gse electro mod so they took an old chassis and made it this one electric pretty spectacular but today of course it was all about the all new astra generation what do you think also when you saw here you know the old models of course competitors the vw golf 8 and also the internally from the corporation the peugeot 308 in a new generation see at these videos a large all-electric SUV, this is the interpretation by BMW, the all-new BMW iX. For example, to fight against the tester model X. <laughs> and you can see here, this has really interesting dimensions, more, you know, close to BMW X5 or something, but of course, all-electric. And let's start here, directly in the front, where we have two very interesting features. First of all, as for the design, this huge kind of mono kidney i would say you see yeah it's a mono kidney like a mono brow <laughs> but here you can see this is one kidney the other one but here they are actually you know combined in the middle and this material here on the top part has a very interesting effect because i could literally take a screwdriver and do like this like, and could damage it and at room temperature or you need to heat it a little bit when it's cold, it repairs itself from, from scratches. I hope at a later stage we can also take a live sample of that for you, but I've seen it, it's, it's working very well, and it's like, how does it work? It's very interesting, kind of like a memory material. And also the wiper fluid here, look at that, blue accentuation around the BMW logo, and here you can fill in the wiper fluid then under the logo, so yeah. Very interesting, this is also a new BMW philosophy where they want to hide basically very practical features and make them still accessible at, you know, at some point. The headlamps here, slim integration, LED standard, optional. You can also get laser lamps for that and very aggressive styling here with the black contrast here in the lower right part. When we take a look at the side profile, you can see it has some kind of, you know, roofline that goes a little bit flatter towards the rear the door handles are guided by the security guys here at the moment <laughs> so yeah on the motor show here IAA motor show in Munich not always easy to keep a clear look to the vehicle but we try to make it as good as possible here for the impressions here the big wheels you can see here in a two-tone scheme these here are the 22 inch wheels different size available once again the blue accentuations for the i models the length four meters 95 or 195 inches 20 21 or 22 inch are available actually as for the wheel sizes then this mirror caps here in the vehicle color in this case black frames around the window and you can see here the door handles you can go in there so also streamlined but then you grab in so they are presenting different new you know ways of opening the car for example the bmw i4 opens like you touch it and you pull it upwards you can also check out this video on auto fuel and towards the rear we have this ix batch this kind of separates the roof from the you know top roof from the lower body strong shoulder accentuations and when the trunk cover here is closed we can also take a look at the rear. So the BMW iX has the length of a BMW X5, is as flat as a BMW X6 and has the big wheels just as the BMW X7. So taking different dimensions from the BMW SUVs and in the rear really extremely slim tail lamps right here. Once again blue accentuations then all the way over the place with the BMW i logo and also with the blue logo around the BMW badge. And in the lower part, we know also this diffuser styling. We also saw it with the BMW i4, for example. But overall, a very clean design in the, in the rear. And it really looks different from the other BMW um, SUV models. What's your take on that? And we can also take a look here at the trunk. This is not too large, actually. You can see, uh, interesting that we have here some carbon fiber, it seems. Or it's uh, more like CFRP. Here underneath, yeah, you can also fold the seats here, here underneath, some more space. 
but actually uh, kind of shallow this whole trunk. You can take this top part here out and then you can also fold the seats directly from here in an electric way. But I would have expected a little bit more trunk capacity, 500 up to 1,750 liters it is. As for the battery sizes, 71 kilowatt hours net or 105 kilowatt hours net. And that will either give you some 400 kilometers or 250 miles of range or in the bigger battery, some 600 kilometers or 370 miles of range. Of course, in our driving part to coming up very soon, we will test if this is really true. As for suspension, you start with a base adaptive suspension and optionally you can get a full air suspension for this vehicle. Door handles, when I press in the front part, not sure if it's because of the prototype stage, but I really have to press here that it opens. Not sure why, we'll keep you updated on that. Door closing sound, yeah, extremely cheap, but it's also frameless doors here, but we also check if this one is improving over time. Then interior, this looks really fancy, soft touch materials. Integration of the ambient lighting is right here. And then kind of like a crystalline structure here of the seat control. And there are still buttons you can really move. And wow, this looks super fancy also here for the memory seating. And black fabric then here next to the Bowers & Wilkins optional sound system. And there you can also once again see here the carbon fiber core here of that model, very interesting. As for the seating materials, by the way, talking about materials, you will have a mix of fabric and microfiber and some wool chair, then Sensatec in beige, brown or black. This should be the beige Sensatec seat because the animal skin seat is in black and red and it has rather a symmetric shape and this asymmetric shape rather belongs to the Sensatec seat. That's, you know, as my information goes. And this has here a perforated structure and it also feels kind of soft. Overall, the new interior here is yeah, really reminds us of rather like a concept vehicle and this is actually a production vehicle. 12.3 inch screen on the left, 14.9 inch screen on the right and the seats here feel very soft, a very spacious interior and you really feel that this one is thought out to be an all electric vehicle and was planned also on an EV platform and that's also what makes more sense with the EVs. Steering wheel here with the electric control and a completely new steering wheel we have not seen with BMW yet in this kind of octagon shape. Cruise control, however, here still with manual buttons or real buttons to touch. At least a mix. This is capacitive, but here I can still set something. But really cool shape, definitely. Here, right side, then with a volume jog here for the music. That's also good. Soon more to the infotainment. Here, also soft touch materials and this kind of yeah, like yard bow all the way across the front interior. I really like this clean setup, and this one has, one has an open space atmosphere in the front. You can, for example, also put a big handbag here in, in the front. Like this here, this open space area, really cool. And then you yeah, have like a tablet here, two USB-C chargers and more space, like inductive charging uh, pad for your phone, cup holders and so on. And even fancier here, this is like a mad wood service underneath the crystalline MMI knob, I like to call it that way because Audi calls it that way. <laughs> yeah, but this one also. Interesting turning sound. It really has an interesting haptic feedback. So, and then you can see this is also a new trend. So, these buttons here are integrated. So, they are also somewhat capacitive, give you feedback. You also hear that. And when you integrate this with high gloss piano lacquer, it looks cheap. But when you integrate it with wood surface here, then it actually makes sense and looks fancy, doesn't it? So this middle console is super interesting. This, by the way, the shifting lever here, when you put it forward or backward, this is where you put in reverse gear, drive gear or B for more recuperation and so on. And here is another manual volume jog. And then we have the typical split opening for some more space. And in this, like, a lot of space, I can... I <laughs> almost hide my whole big microphone in here. By the way, better sound for you here from the Motor Show. This is actually quite noisy around here, but with that one, you only hear my voice. Infotainment system OS8, so BMW OS8 premiere here in the BMW iX. Nice visualization of the vehicle, by the way. It will be available as the X-Drive 40 with 6.1 seconds excavation figure or then 4.6 seconds in the excavation at the X-Drive 50 with more horsepower. And here you can see this is a you know, normal GPS by BMW. We 
know and you know actually like this is here the fairground here munich but then again when you take a look at the um you know all this by the way the gesture control for the volume yeah but then we have this new main menu and this is kind of like i think a little bit overloaded i think and also not too good of a contrast so i do prefer the older software generation of bmw i have to admit what about you? I would like to know from you guys. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are both available. Here, of course, in this case, no smartphone is connected yet with this vehicle. And once again, back to the main menu. Here you can have also hotkeys and the climate is integrated here. Hmm. Yeah, here, tool zone, climate AC. It stays at the same place and is actually relatively easy accessible, but still... I think it's not a good trend that we get rid of these buttons then and move it all the way to the screen. Instruments, usually you cannot adjust them that much with the BMW vehicles. It will show digital speed, of course, and has a nice, you know, appearance as for just the first visual impression. And when we drive this vehicle very soon, stay subscribed. We show you all about that. To get out of the vehicle, by the way, I press this button here and the steering wheel also moves up again. So this, I mean, it's a nice integration. It also is kind of like a natural movement right here. I wonder where they put the manual release, especially for our friends in the US. And now I'm really excited to get to the rear because this is a dedicated EV platform and you know, BMW has started with the iProject with the going separate EV platform, then they went back for the iX3 or the i4 using like you know zombie platforms or just putting the EVs on the existing platforms and with this one however they do a separate platform and again yeah not sure which direction they are going but this one is a good direction because we have plenty of legroom right here then we have no middle tunnel whatsoever this is very good open space here in the rear and once again soft touch materials everywhere we see and look and it's a very you know, roomish atmosphere in the rear. Once again, one means a six or six with one, plenty of headroom left. And also again, with the perforated sensor tech materials, make a good quality impression. Cup holders are right here. And we do, you know, we do fold the seats then from the trunk. So there's no possibility from here. There's an extensive climate unit also for the rear. Well, seat heating is probably not the best idea at the hot motor show right here. And what we can also see here from the rear, when Cornelius moves a little bit more down, yes, get on your knees, <laughs> and then films up, we can see here this top roof. This has an electrochromatic function. So at the moment we have this kind of shade, but we can also, not sure if it's working right now, because um, it might not be powered at the moment. No, probably not. But when we drive the vehicle, we can show you that you can, you maybe know it from Mercedes SL, it can be like, let you look through, all that's look, looking like this, so you don't need a separate shade. The glass itself is being induced electronic, uh, you know, electrically, and then you have this change of the visibility or non-visibility. Magic, yo! Recharging, 11 kilowatt AC, or DC charging then 195 kilowatt, so it also ensures a good fast charging opportunity. And here, cutaway model with the battery pack, as I said, either 71 kilowatt hours or optional 105 kilowatt hours net about 20,000 euros is the extra price it starts about 80,000 euros or dollars and then 20,000 more if you go for the bigger model with some more stand equipment and especially with the bigger battery pack here by the way the red interior this one is the animal interior so where you can see the rather more symmetric shape in this quilting style so this confirms that the other one the beige interior was the sensor tech interior so really hard to differentiate nowadays you really have to know like the structure from the configurator from the build side to really differentiate it gladly that we can rely on new good materials and here once again low center of gravity it's a big suv but it's supposed to drive really, really sporty. We will find out for you, of course. And this also has a different exterior color. Well, it's cut open at the moment here, but you can still already see, you know, how this rather red exterior color will look like in the sporty trim. 22 inch wheels then also in this case. Can I scratch it? Like totally destroy it? No, not at the moment. Ah, okay, damn it. I really wanted to destroy it now to show you the effect that it repairs itself. Yeah, I hope at a later stage we get the possibility to do so. Again, follow us soon for the driving part and compare the BMW i4, definitely, their electric sedan. Maybe also the X5 plug-in hybrid or a Tesla Model X. We all have these interesting videos we see there. My first look at the BMW i4, the all-electric 3 Series. Well, 
rather a four series Grand Coupe if you want to take it that way. Definitely here the competitor to the Tesla Model 3, the electric sedan by BMW in this typical BMW i shape. And we also can see the new double kidney here, closed, vertical and horizontally. Everything is big and then the blue accentuations here. This fits very, very well, of course, also to the BMW logo and they work with blue for all their BMW i models. So very strong front there. And also here, a sporty lower part here with the bumper. The headlamps here, LED or optional also with the BMW laser light. Once again, with the blue accentuations, you can see it here. And of course, this car works very, very well in white. And I remember my grandma had a BMW 3 Series in white and E30. And well, maybe this is how the future of BMW will continue then. There will be rear-wheel drive models and also an all-wheel drive model, like an M50 model, so to speak. Soon more to the power figures. First of all, let's take a look at the side profile here. And I would say we move that, that sign him away so we can see more of the vehicle. Sorry, BMW guys. There, we need a more clear look of the vehicle. <laughs> look at that. These are the 19-inch wheels, different size available. Here also in a two-color scheme. And once again, the BMW i blue accentuation, and I think it really works very well with the white. Then we have a very, very stretched roofline, as I said, more like a 4-series Grand Coupe. Integrated door handles for better wind efficiency. It comes close to Tesla Model 3 as for the CD value. Little, you know, little bit difference. Um, not as good as the Tesla Model 3, but definitely comes already quite close. The electric range, yeah, it depends on the power output, but supposed to be some up to 600 kilometers or 500 kilometers for the more powerful M50 version. So we can expect some 300 miles plus, maybe even 370 miles than for the lower power versions in an optimum scale. We'll see, of course, soon with the driving test of this vehicle, if this is true. So subscribe if you haven't done it so far. Auto go through with Thomas. Towards the rear, we have here shoulder forming right there. And we'll soon also talk about the charging and so on. And the tail lamps already begin here kind of at the side and are really stretched all the way across the vehicle. And a very clean design in the rear as well with the blue accentuation around the BMW logo. And if we take a little broader perspective, we can see in the lower part, we have this kind of diffuser style, once again, with the blue contrast in color. And, you know, even, you know, form follows function as well, because this is also to optimize the wind flow. The length, by the way, 4 meters 78 or 188 inches, and the wheel sizes from 17 to 20 inch. So this one then towards the upper range. As for the battery, 81 kilowatt hours net, so that's actually quite substantial and recharging 7.4 or optional 11 kilowatt AC or 200 kilowatt DC. So this will also guarantee a good fast charging possibility. Well, and in the front, there is no front, just this cover. So as you can see, we can see nothing. Acceleration figures, by the way, for the rear drive model, 5.7 seconds for the E-Drive 40 and the M50 model will have 3.7 nine seconds in the acceleration figure to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. Air suspension for the rear axle is standard actually. An option you can also get an adaptive M suspension then especially for the M50 model. It even has towing capacity like 1600 kilograms or 3500 pounds so you can even put a trailer then behind this car that looks already kind of sporty. Even more interesting what have they done with the interior? Well, since it's like a 4 Series Grand Coupe, you also have this fastback opening and I really love that. It's also a great advantage if you compare it to the Tesla Model 3. And this is then 470 up to 1290 liters in capacity. This is like just a small cover right there. And then you can lift this one up and have some more space here. The optional Harman Kardon sound system, the, you know, that you get a real bass here. <laughs> Why not? From the subwoofer, some more cubby space right here, 12 volt power supply, hangers, and we cannot fold the seats from here, we have to do the from trunk. But I mean, this is actually very good in length, not too high actually, but to me, the best advantage is definitely that you have this good access here due to the fastback opening. And hey, since we're here, why not test the child safety? Yeah, that's well done, Thomas proof. <laughs> Towards the interior, once again here, the integrated door handles, but you see here, they fold out to the upper button. 
This is very interesting and it gives a better feedback than the Porsche ones that we know to do. Oh, door closing sound is not good at all here, but it also has frameless doors, you can see it right there. No dual insulation glass though, see single glass. And we did have vehicles with frameless doors like the Volkswagen Arteon, which had a door, good door closing sound nevertheless. Soft touch materials at the inside of the doors, ambient lighting right here. This really reminds us rather of the normal 3 Series, what we see at the inside of the doors, but really good materials definitely. And then towards the main interior, we can see once again that we have more blue situation. Yeah, also, oh, from, from the chassis, that looks fancy, right? And then the lower part right here, also with the blue situation right there. And then typical BMW i, once again, blue around the logo, 3 Series steering wheel here too. The display is actually completely different. So that display here, 12.3 inch in the left, 14.9 inch in the right and it looks like it would go all the way through but of course they are two different or two separate screens but this is definitely a different layout than we know from the combustion engine models as for the seats this one here is the animal skin seat which is of course not fitting to the sustainable electric concept how do you know it is the one it has this structure here this you know like this these different parts in this shape there you see that this is the animal skin seat you should also avoid. However, they have a wide choice of either fabric Sensatec mix or a completely perforated Sensatec high-grade leatherette in beige, red, brown and black. So four different color choices then. So it will feel approximately the same. We have seen the new Sensatec materials in the BMW 5 Series facelift already and they offered really great material quality there so looking forward to up you, update you with that one. As for the seating position it is somewhat 3 Series alike. Electric control of the seats here of course and one with 86 or 6 with 1. Still some headroom left here. This is the one with the panoramic roof. We can't open it here at the moment, not fully powered. Steering wheel up and down, in and out, very, very smooth process as we know from BMW. So overall, you know, how do you feel it's the i4 and not like the 3Cs or something? Mainly the display and you sit relatively low in the vehicle as well. Seating position, I would say, could be a little bit more comfortable, but it's overall suitable. Hey, heated steering wheel, of course, one of my favorite features. I would say, let's take a deep look at this you know, impressive screen setup. Cockpit overview here, nice matte wood, but the overall impression is, yeah, kind of 3 series or 4 series, but then again, with this attached display integration, I mean, because it goes all the way through, it's kind of okay, but at the same time, it looks also kind of attached. But then again, we have a good view to that and we can also still access it here for the touch, soft touch here also. Still a manual climate knob, uh, sorry, not a climate knob, of course, a volume knob. But I do miss the manual climate knob, definitely, because they are gone. They would be here, right there in the 3 Series. So here we have the climate controls right there in the screen. Hmm, at least they stay at the same place. Hmm, okay, then they have a completely... What is this? They have a completely new infotainment system, but definitely less overview than before. I can also control it from the lower button. Um, this is good that I do not have to use the touchscreen while driving all the time. Okay. But then again, I think it offers less overview than before. The map actually, we know it from the visualization here at IAA Motor Show in Munich, of course, and also close to the headquarters of BMW. So this is kind of the same, hmm, but what do you guys think about this new infotainment software? I think the older one offered us really a better overview of what we're doing. Hmm, what's your take on that? If we move over to the instruments, actually, there's not so much to see or to control there. Um, you can reset here, the, like the, you know, the consumption figures and so on. When we drive the vehicle, then we will able, we will able to see even a little bit more of that. As I said, if you're subscribed, you won't miss the driving review of that one. The steering wheel itself, right side here, still real buttons. With nice clicking sounds here, for example, for the volume on the right side. Left side and everything to control the cruise control for the level 2 um, autonomous driving settings, of course, with, with adaptive cruise control and so on and so on. My 
you know, favorite area is rather here down below, start stop button in blue accentuations and also here a normal shifting lever to get something of this, you know, more classic BMW feeling. And this one here we know very well. First of all, this control in here for the infotainment system and in the top part here, lower top part, you have inductive charging pad, adaptive cup holders and also some nice wooden structure, matte wood, love that. And here very well attached this armrest and USB-C charging. Can you take it, Connie? No. No, he can't? Yeah, here we have this USB-C charger. Now getting towards the rear, this will be very interesting. And I have set the seat to my driving position and you see there's not much leg room left. So I um, feel kind of cramped in here. Headroom wise, this is actually okay for a tall adult. Then there is a substantial middle tunnel, USB-C chargers, but then getting to the middle seat, yeah, will be some kind of a problem. First of all, let's take a look here. We can fold this one as a ski hatch, for example. We can also fold the rest of the seats from here. And this is here then for the adaptive cup holders. So what we can clearly see here, this was not thought as an all-electric vehicle. They are running from the same assembly plan as a normal BMW 3 Series, and you see that here. Like a Tesla Model 3, yes, it doesn't look that fancy like the BMW i4 from the outside, so the exterior is, to me, really cool. Yeah, everything shall be in order. Order! <laughs> then here, you can sit here, but yeah, especially the rear, it's not such a, sh such a you know, short vehicle, but it's really cramped in the rear. So. My verdict is they are not using the advantages of an electric vehicle with this one here. The driving dynamics, which are soon to come on our channel, will probably be amazing. I'm pretty sure about that. But the space of the interior on all the seats, kind of a little bit wasted. Good vehicles to compare, Polestar 2 and Tesla Model 3. We have a very interesting comparison episode of them. See you there. This could be the next generation BMW i3. So far it's called BMW iVision Circular and why Circular? This car here is showcasing at the IIA Motor Show in Munich how a future BMW could look like and also circular economy or circular production process, how everything comes to a circle. Why? This car is made from 100% reused or recycled materials and can also be to 100% be reused or recycled. And this is, of course, a very ambitious goal. And here on the Motor Show, BMW released their aim is to be the most sustainable premium manufacturer. That's a tough goal, actually. And of course, here we are now to go through with Thomas. We'll follow this goal if this is really true. Let's take a look at this concept here. And I mean, this could really be a next generation i3. We see the next generation of the double kidneys might be wider again. So we have seen a lot of evolution with the double kidneys. Here everything integrated of course, all electric vehicle and you can see there is no paint on this vehicle. This is actually an anodized material so there's no chemical paint on it. Also once again to save resources and to make it more environmentally friendly. Very interesting. And if we move over to the side profile you can see it's not such a long vehicle. It has this kind of one box design or BMW calls it mono volume. Interesting, and even this, the tires here, they are actually a mix of natural rubber and reused old classic rubber. So even with the tires, they follow a sustainability approach. Further on here on the side, probably you can see it's rather a glass box, but it's not only autonomous or something, which where you know a lot of concept vehicles are. Here, this one still has the steering wheel. We can also soon take a look at the interior, which is open in a very spectacular way. But you can see a lot of glass is being used. And still, they try to somehow keep a BMW identity. Here, reminds us also of current BMWs with a strong lower side skirt there and also with this strong shoulder area right here. Of course, this kind of one box design might not seem that sexy <laughs> at first glance. I'm really looking forward to your comments. What do you think here about this vehicle? Let's take a look at the rear, because here we have rather, uh, you know, a hatch shape, but once again, a lot of glass and the tail lamps are also seamlessly integrated. Everything then actually aiming for better wind efficiency. And I really like this illuminated BMW logo here at the rear. That looks actually pretty fancy. Now let's take a look at the interior. The doors open like this and yeah, 
it seems to be that these guns always want to show suicide doors. Interesting that also the steel and aluminum that's being used is reused. That's also a very interesting approach. And you can see here an all fabric interior. So there's no paint, no animal leather, no chrome being used on this vehicle. So I really like this very consistent approach they've taken. And this looks really living room alike. Future cars will be more like living rooms. Yeah, if this is maybe too much, we can <laughs> discuss about that. But this really looks completely different. Here's some kind of like glass craftsmanship work, for example. That's also pretty interesting. And once again, no animals in the vehicle. That's, of course, also a good approach. And what I also find quite fancy that the interiors become maybe a little bit more plush and maybe also for autonomous driving, but even if you're driving yourself, you know, can't hurt to be a little bit softer right there. This is also pretty cool because you can see there's an EV platform, of course, and you have an even floor. This is supposed to carry a solid state battery. This is something that might come in the future. And, you know, solid state batteries can actually carry more dense capacity at the same time you don't need more space and that's why you can have just a higher range. Steering wheel here, flat bottom design. We see something similar already in the BMW iX, the production vehicle. You can also tune into a review here on AutoCrew on our channel and this glass capacitive buttons and that might be something. I mean capacitive curse, hashtag capacitive curse. I don't like them when they're hidden behind these, you know, just panel like a services but in the iX we've seen a wood surface with capacitive buttons here glass surface with capacitive buttons capacitive buttons and this might be a solution to make capacitive buttons sexy and can we open the other door as well that it might be a cool cool show effect right yeah there we go so here you can really like literally jump and walk through the vehicle what's also interesting is um, a thing that already works actually um, we've tested it I think in uh, Las Vegas on CS like a couple of years ago this is also planned for this one here, sound zones, so you can sit like here and listen to your own music and you can sit on the other seat and listen to another music. This won't give you the best surround effect, of course, but at least when you are arguing with your spouse maybe about the music choice, that might solve a lot of problems. And this is actually a thing that is thought out for, you know, a lot of different new concept vehicles here now. So would this one be a new i3? At that point, you know, like you know, so many years ago, meanwhile, the i3 was really leading today. It could even be a concept car still. This might then be the next step, but I really like that we still have a steering wheel and we still also have throttle and brake pedal. So I like to be able to drive my car myself still. But clearly, this concept here stands for a BMW approach of even more sustainability and in a very consistent way. By the way, also that they don't have any waste in production. So for example, the main part of the steering wheel is 3D printed and with 3D printing you apply different layers and then you don't have any cutaway materials like with a typical steel and aluminum stancing. And even in that part here, they take the rest of the materials and then reuse them again. And more 3D printing, um, if Cornelius or cameraman shows us here like the, um, the connection of the door and the chassis, there you can see this 3D printing surface where you don't use, you know, you, you leave some gaps to, to use actually less materials. So this looks also very interesting. You see this, you know, this is this whole structure right there, also 3D printed. So definitely 3D printing is also something that is coming ahead in car manufacturing. And there is even a theory, I want to show, uh, share that with you, that with 3D printing, car manufacturing could become something with lower or at the end of the day maybe zero marginal um, cost that means that you can produce cars anywhere and it also doesn't matter that much anymore how many cars you produce and that could actually bring down prices for the cars overall. Hmm. So will this one be then a rather affordable BMW that goes really full circle for the whole car production? That is a very interesting goal and that's why I want to share this vehicle with you. Please also tune in to the BMW iX review, the final production week of the big SUV. Maybe not that sustainable, but as sustainable as it gets maybe at the moment at BMW for big SUVs. At least some approach right there. And also tune in to more concept vehicles here we've shown to you recently. All the manufacturers are going electric, so is Renault, and this is the all-new Renault Megane E-Tech, so the EV of the Renault Megane, but it has nothing to do platform-wise with the, so far, 
Megan. This one here sharing a platform with the Nissan Aria. Very interesting, definitely, because Renault and Nissan obviously have this cooperation. Here you can see in the front the Renault logo, two-dimensional, also in a new style. Sensors are being hidden behind it. This one here also with a special golden styling and this dot structure there in the front. So kind of sporty look, actually. Rather upright whole front. And this is a rather short vehicle with four meters 21 or 166 inches and you can see what is it actually is it crossover has it some kind of van atmosphere is it just a compact hatch or a small hatch it's actually very short so maybe something in between or something on its own interesting that on the side profile we can see a very distinctive design contrasting black roof in this version then here integrated rear door handle soon more to that and also very sporty wheel arches painted here in high gloss black and together with the biggest 20 inch wheels that are available there will be two battery sizes available 40 or 60 kilowatt hours net and the projected range will be 190 or 290 miles so you know yeah some 300 kilometers or 470 kilometers so always substantial range especially if you go for the bigger battery pack then in the rear we can see here light strip going all the way across the vehicle this new Renault logo as well really more modern definitely now this one will be the hatch opener soon going to show you that as well and once again here in this special version the golden contrast strip and maybe as a color change here there is a red one for you you can also see for example the daytime running light and a very striking red color so so far really like the color choices they have here too or what about the white one where for example this contrasting black lower dot grill has an even stronger contrast interesting technology detail they will use multi-link rear axle for, so you will have more comfort at the rear especially if you compare it with other models so this is not that common in this rather short segment so that's actually quite good top speed will be 160 kilometers an hour or 100 miles an hour that's i think also decent for this front wheel driven ev and would say let's take a look under the hood will we have a frunk or something hmm no there's a no frunk you can see there will be two different power versions, 130 or 218 horsepower. The bigger one or the stronger one, 7.4 seconds in the acceleration figure and is also connected to the bigger battery. These door handles here, they come out, otherwise they're closed. And here, this, this um, side part, this is then for the classic control when you use the real key. Maybe, yeah, if something loses power or something. Then, let's take a look at the interior here. This is a very interesting structure, so new materials are being used also here. This one, however, on the top part is hard pack. This one then is soft touch, and this one here also soft then for your elbows. At least some galvanization here at the window levers and reasonable door pockets. And an all new interior with capacitive buttons, hashtag capacitive curse on the steam. Well, this is a real one, but here pick up as a button one field we see that with so many manufacturers but the steering wheel itself looks quite cool with a flat bottom right there and all digitalized interior digital instruments and also infotainment system and we can see also that it basically forms this hmm, tetris <laughs> form <laughs> like in you know l or or something so yeah that's very interesting and can i tune on the volume right there yeah, that's always the thing you are searching for, you know, how can I tune down the volume right there? Because there's some music running, that's why we have the big microphone. Seats, in this case here, the animal skin pack, but they also have some entry-level fabric, for example, which is also then having a recycling share. Also, the bottom of the car, like the floor mats and so on, use recycled materials. So they have definitely increased the share of recycled materials here in that interior. And it really looks way more modern than before, so completely new indeed. Uh, interesting new approach here for the new Renault vehicles and let's take a seat see about the comfort so and let's also see how I can tune down this music and yeah this is then again capacitive here on the side I really like to have like you know real dials with ah here and on this side they kept this one you know the um, if you're a Renault customer you know you have these dials here next to the steering wheel they really kept the classic ones um, soon we're going to show you because from this angle you can't see it so let's go now 
with a proper seating position. I'm one meters 86 or 61. Subscribers know. And headroom here, enough headroom left. Steering wheel can be moved up and down, in and out. Actually quite good control. And this looks really, you know, when we, for example, compare the recent Renault review we did with the Arcana, this is a really you know, new futuristic interior. Very crisp how the instruments appear and so on. So definitely very interesting. In the top part here, this is rather hard actually here from the dashboard, but optional Harman Kardon sound system. This is something we also have to find out in a test drive or something. Here there's a so-called multi-sense button and this one then go to, you know, goes to the different driving modes. Easy to pick then here at the steering wheel, that's a cool thing, like with a sports car. And there you can see also how the driving modes adapt to that sport, comfort, eco and so on to give you even more boost for that. Here the cockpit overview, you can see once again this form is horizontal here and then rather vertical screen right here. Yes, we still have manual climate dials. That's good actually. So and they have a nice clicking sound as well. So I really, uh, really like to have them. That's actually pretty cool. Here there's inductive charging pad then for your smartphone. You can easily access it and also some leatherette with some um, contour stitching right there. I think it's a very interesting design they found here. Let's focus on the infotainment system. And here you can see way to go because we know it from the Polestar 2 for example this one here is a Google infotainment system and that's of course awesome wow who would have expected that that Renault goes for this one this is really groundbreaking for the whole brand you can still have Android Auto and also Apple CarPlay so that's actually cool but having this Android based infotainment system is of course I mean they are really then on the same par as Polestar and also with Tesla and no one else. And all the premium manufacturers, they have suddenly a worse infotainment system than Renault. And that's, of course, shocking. It's such an easy solution to go for the Google solution and, and have, you know, actually good speed and especially the best voice recognition system, of course, and the best map guidance system. So way to go you know we've seen so many other um, brands developing their own system spending billions of dollars or euros and still they are super bad this is way to go and still physical buttons in the lower part hey this might bring a lot of customers back to Renault indeed in the low, lower part then here cup holders you can adjust them with these splitters here then more cup holders in the front and here this armrest here you can slide a little bit forward or backward forward then there are two usb-c chargers hidden you cannot see it at the moment and here when i open it more space underneath you can't see it at the moment either but what you can see now finally is here this rather classic volume control so i didn't expect that they still put this one here um, and then you can also switch the songs with with a you know turning jog here behind it so this rather classic Renault element they obviously kept that the customers still feel at home if you already have owned a Renault before and very interesting detail look at that here this is either a normal mirror or you can switch it around and then you have a screen when maybe like the back in the trunk everything is packed fully and yeah you can also watch the people <laughs> at the show here access to the rear here integrated very nice solution and then here also hard back of course at some point you know they need to have some cost savings and at the moment this one is rather a dark interior so you cannot see too much but the real big question is this is a short vehicle it's a small EV I can't believe how short it is actually from the exterior dimensions but will I have enough legroom still I mean I can't imagine but yeah, I mean, with my feet, it's a little bit close, so the seat would need to be put a little bit higher. But then you see, it's not like plentiful, but still, my knees fit in here. You can drive this car with four tall adults, although it's just four meters twenty. That's really astonishing. So, very impressed by the dimensions, and of course, using the EV platform, you can very well sit in the middle here as well. There is no middle tunnel whatsoever of course the battery placed all the way in the bottom of the vehicle also then low center of gravity for that and what they also thought of is a special access for the battery for firefighters that in you know case of a crash and you know you know it might <laughs> it is actually a big problem that when batteries catch fire or tend to catch fire 
It's hard to put them out. Interesting that the manufacturer thought of that. And now the trunk, 440 liters. Let's take a look at that. You have this button right here. They can open then the hatch. Yeah. Let's see, maybe with the shoker. There we go. There we go. So, see here, not too large, of course. Then here, storage for charging cable. But I mean, considering the length of the vehicle, still very well usable. So the overall usage of space, even in the front, I didn't feel cramped at all. This was overall very, very impressive. So I would say. Renault is really back on track here with the new Megane EV. Or oh, what's your take on that? Of course, comparable competitor would be the VW ID3. Tune into that review. I mean, but at that size, maybe even a Honda E or something. But of course, this one already offers a, you know, you know, actually a, a very good overall range, especially then if you go for the bigger battery pack. So that might then even compete with some bigger EVs as for these and also for the feeling we have in the front. What's your take? See in the comments. The way Coffee Zero One is trying to wake up the European market, so to speak, this here is a premium SUV from a Chinese manufacturer. Way actually is the premium SUV brand from the Great Wall Motor Corporation and they are trying to tackle the European market with this one because I say if we prevail here, then we can prevail anywhere. Very interesting. Will this work? From a Germanish Thomas perspective, we'll take a closer look at this one here, the Coffee Zero One. In the front, huge grille, chrome plating in the vertical style and an off-roadish contrasting bumper. The headlamps horizontally drawn with vertical daytime running light. Very interesting. And nice blue color here, some lighter and darker nuance depending on where you look at it. Even more interesting is where is this car positioned if we come towards the side profile. First of all, this is a plug-in hybrid model, 150 kilometers or 90 miles of range from a 40 kilowatt hour battery. Soon also taking a look on the hood because they say that plug-in hybrids are at the moment the way to go and not battery electric only. They want to, want to go with that with smaller vehicles, but later on they also want to be all electric. If we take a look at the side profile here, come over. First of all, we have huge wheels. 21 inch right there in a two-tone style so pretty massive look and this whole design really is appealing European or American taste and this is very interesting the Chinese manufacturer is appealing European or US taste whereas for example Mercedes the German manufacturer is trying to appeal Chinese market taste at the moment with the design yeah that's it very interesting isn't it as for the length this one here, 4 meters 84 or 191 inches, so indeed between a BMW X3 and X5 or between Mercedes GLC and Mercedes GLE. So interesting positioning between the classic German competition. When we follow here the side profile, the door handles, they fold in and out depending if the car is open or closed. We have the chrome frame here around the windows, also with the roof railing and rather strong shoulder effect here. So. Not exactly upright SUV, not exactly SUV coupe, something in between, but definitely a very fluent design here already in the side profile. And the turning indicators here in the front, already in a cascading style. And the same also accounts for the rear. We can see modern tail lamp signature, also with this typical vertical style, big way lettering right here, and also rather honest design in the lower part. We have an off-roadish contrasting bumper and no fake exhaust tip whatsoever. This plug-in hybrid system, by the way, works in the combustion engine in the front, electric motor in the front, and also electric motor in the rear to give you then the electric all-way drive. And the acceleration figure, actually quite impressive. Five seconds, everything combined, the fastest one, or seven seconds with a pure electric, then maximum speed of 135 kilometers an hour. And this comes here from a two-liter four-cylinder engine. This is in the combustion engine, as I said, one electric motor in the front, one also in the rear and 40 kilowatt hour net battery so this will be in the plug-in hybrid market one with the highest pure electric range and there's a color alternative we also have one here in black the coffee zero one which is yeah still one of the most liked colors if you look at this very segment it's always like black gray silver white and so on i would prefer a thomas blue definitely but do you prefer the black one? Tell me in the comments. As for Chinese vehicles, people have been quite critical about the build quality, but we can see here the panel gaps, at least here, for example, are actually very marginal. So this is a first sign. 
will keep on testing. For example, also that door closing sound, famous test here in Autogefühl. This sounds very solid, so nice door closing sound. Then towards the interior, you can see here soft touch in the top part. This is the ambient lighting flashing at the moment. This will of course be a through light then in the final model. Then there are also soft touch materials here, right there, and also there. And this is all high grade leatherette. This is one of the highest grades of leatherette available. This is all animal free and no one would expect it. This could also be like a 10,000 euro or dollar super leather whatever option, but it's all animal free. So this is really respectable that they went for that. The whole car is animal free. Then also here, galvanized tops for the window lever right there. This reminds us a little bit um, of the build quality we see maybe like from Genesis, for example. Inside door pockets right there. Then we have this illuminated way entry badge. And a uh, steering wheel that looks a little bit like a like Lincoln, for example, reminds me a little bit of a Lincoln design. Interesting blue white interior. This is a very interesting style. And here also soft touch dashboard. You can see a you know rather simple and basic instrument. We'll soon also show you more details about that. At the moment, ignition is off. Capacitive buttons for the steering wheel. They do give you some kind of feedback, but it's one area. I don't like capacitive buttons that much, we've already seen it with Mercedes, but at least they give you a haptic feedback right here. What's really cool in the highlight of this vehicle are the seats. Again, this is also... Yeah, I mean, look at that, this quilting here, and this is like a microfiber material, but the quilted microfiber, hardly have seen that ever, and then leather red on the outside. This feels super premium, very interesting, wow. I mean, styling-wise and also, you know, how how premium it feels. This is really, really impressive. Yeah, indeed. I mean, like the first impression is, wow, look at that. Let's take a seat, see about the comfort. And it's really interesting that they actually take, um, you know, the sustainability topic probably even more seriously than some of the German manufacturers at the moment. They are also heading this direction. We can see that they are also at the IA Motor Show in Munich with their new concept vehicles. Um, but this one here is production ready. Then here, electric motors for the seats and they are indeed very comfortable. You have an upright seating position as well and with 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1, still enough headroom left. This here also features a panoramic roof. Um, when we turn the ignition on, we can also open it later on. By the way, this car here, you can also see you know, some, some sensors right here. This works with fake face recognition. So then when my face is being recognized, it already sets everything like steering wheel, seating position to my position. Now you might ask yourself, especially since it's coming from a Chinese manufacturer, what about data security? So what they do is the face recognition data, they say, is just stored inside the vehicle. And for the European market, <clears throat> everything that goes in the software infotainment system and so on is based in a European cloud that is then also running on European data security laws. So they are really thinking of these topics here as well. And of course, it's very, very you know, important to ask them about that. So far, everything we see here from the buttons and so on, Let's see if this is... Ah, okay, here I found something. This is not dampened. So maybe um, when the engineers are watching here, so the German would expect that this cubby hole is dampened. So you see, I could find something at least <laughs> from my German perspective. But the rest of the build quality also with the shifting pedals and so on, this makes a very, very decent first impression. The middle console is actually quite large. It kind of houses you in here a little bit. And we see here basically three screens. This is 14 inch right there. This is another screen. And we also have a big head up display. Minimalistic here, definitely the digital instruments. So with the speed right there. They kept this one here really, really small because they say most of the time you will look at the head up display. A huge 14 inch screen here, very interesting the integration at the moment, this is still a prototype stage but they promise a new Qualcomm chip here for a very high CPU speed. We will check with the final vehicle how that one turns out. This is the main menu, this is not the final software version but you can get a first glimpse on how this is going to look like. There will also be Android Auto and Apple CarPlay connectivity available. 
This is, for example, reminding us a little bit of Tesla, for example, where you can set also different driving modes here, for example. And, for example, set up this one here once, and then basically everything is set. You also have different ambient lighting colors. Here at the moment also we can see in, in this show mode. There will also be a 360-degree camera being accessed over here. And this one here is, for example, the volume control. No real volume knob whatsoever. And the climate unit, yeah, you know, I do prefer manual climate diodes, definitely. They have it here in the second display. And here one more complete cockpit perspective, actually with, you know, handcraft design, but once again, all animal free. So really great materials that you see also really softened everywhere, actually. Vents right there. And there you can see this two screen setup where you have the climate dials right there. Then you have a dual clutch transmission. They developed that actually themselves. And also a very sh small shifting lever. This one here is for cup holders. And then we also have a split armrest right here with some more space underneath, like this. And more storage space, actually, we have to come from a different perspective because that's actually here, <laughs> here just around. And here it is, hello. Here are the chargers, USB chargers on the other side, USB-C and USB-A, and, you know, some more space just to put things here. And here, this is a separate climate screen. Um, I mean, yeah, you can also use voice control, but this is again something where I would prefer manual climate knobs, something they do not have to take from the German manufacturers because they are also going more in a touch direction. So if the Chinese engineers watch here, we in Europe here and also in US prefer manual climate knobs, at least our community here on Autogefühl. Well, this car is 5G ready already and they also offer an app and um, at the moment it already sets, you know, automatic to German, to my language here. They can check out some information on the car and also some news maybe they write, for example. They have a shop right here and of course there will be more functionality later on and also um, like a personal account you can set up. And now we can also open the panoramic roof for you right here. So this is first of all the shade. I really also like this bright interior ceiling and then we can also open the whole thing. This is the half opening so to speak and this is then open. Yeah, as you can see here it goes all the way over the vehicle and yeah to give us some more air here at the motor show atmosphere where it's getting really hot here meanwhile here we go <laughs> and now to the rear where we have you know astonishing leg room right there so this is really a lot this is set to my driver's position here actually and also very comfortable once again with the interesting materials high grade leather and this is really one of the highest grades of leatherette I've seen. And also here the microfiber surface here. I mean, so the seating materials are my favorite thing with this vehicle. Also when you lean backwards, for example. So very spacious, very comfortable here. And we also have the disco mode here once again from the ambient lighting showing us all the available colors. Manual shades right there. And also then at the inside of the rear doors, soft materials all the way here. Once again, the quilting. So when you think about we heard a price of about 50,000 euros or then later maybe also dollars and this is of course very competitive if you think about like for a BMW X5 you have to pay like 30k more or something. Here are the cup holders in the rear like this. So interior build quality wise it can easily catch up with the German premium manufacturers if not exceed it. Yeah, maybe a little bit less screenish, more something to touch and something, and then it's good. Here also rather flat bottom here, no big middle console because there's no mechanical link for the all-wheel drive needed. This is something else which is also making the interior spacious, especially when I move here to the position in the middle. Of course, it is rather thought out for the outside seats, but here even as a tall adult, you can very well sit in the middle seat as well. And then we have the trunk here with the electric hatch. Here we go. So, what we can see here, let's lift that one up. So, this one is not aligned yet here. So, the, yeah, this is a little bit wobbly, so I would like a, a railing left and right, actually. Um, they have put the battery not that far to the rear, so you can still have some, you know, height here in the trunk. This also looks very well processed right there. It's not too high overall still. You can see right there when you know when I'm staying right there, then you have somehow of an imagination. You see, interesting, they didn't go for a too long trunk, but still that, that works very well. The width also around a meter or 40 inches. They rather went for more leg room in the rear. This is also a very interesting approach. We are just right there. 
you cannot fold the seats from here, but at least you can reach over from here. So very interesting approach, not such a long trunk, rather more legroom focus. And of course, we will keep you updated when we can drive this vehicle and then we'll have to see it can, if it can really catch up to the German premium manufacturers because driving agility is something everyone wants to achieve. Will this also work with this one? We'll find out. A spectacular new luxury Audi. I would call it Audi A9. The name is not yet decided, but if you also join me on Audi A9, put it in the comments and support it. Well, maybe it will be called something e-tron. We don't know, but what is clear, although it is a prototype so far, this car will somewhat be real. A lot of elements we see here today will be in the, this luxury Audi in 2024 and it will be something above the Audi A8 and all electric. Let's start in the front. We can see this new styling here behind this plexiglass layer and this is also illuminated from the top part so the inside of the grille looks more three-dimensional. The Audi rings however are a little bit more subtle now and also illuminated and this kind of forming where the ring meet themselves basically here is reflected in the headlamp unit because they use this kind of here this shape this comes basically from the Audi rings very slim integration right there what is this vehicle the the hood here is actually quite short because it's all electric you don't need eight cylinders in it however due to this design clue here this line is really long the hood itself looks longer than it actually is. Wheels, 23 inch, really massive. This is of course, I mean, nowadays, this can be real, absolutely. A couple of years back, you would only see these wheels and concept vehicles. Well, digital cameras became mirrorless and so do the outside mirrors here. This is of course a camera mirror, then projecting uh, image to the inside. Length here, 5 meters 35 or 211 inches. Wheelbase is actually a little bit longer than an A8L, so than an A8 long wheelbase. And this is an also the solution to bring a lot of space on the interior. This kind of futuristic element right here, look at that, how the glass is being split. This will be something we will find in the final vehicle. So you have a kind of panoramic element above that and the window will be lowered right here. This will bring more conceived interior space when you look from the inside to the outside. Also, you can see Audi wants to make their new luxury EVs really design-wise you know, appealing and not say, okay, form for this function and that's it. They have a really stretched roof line, rather following old GT car. Um, you know, when, when you compare it, this is more a design object but yet at the same time, it will have space on the interior. They want to kind of find a compromise and not make say, okay, EVs have to be practical and that's it. So you also have a strong shoulder line right here. And you also have this overlapping wing, kind of glass wing, and the trunk will be open just like this. So the interior space will be separated also in a rather classic sedan style. So your first impression, what do you think about the design? And once again, Let's call it Audi A9. I'm not sure if they will, but we'll try. Looking at the rear, rather sinister look and definitely very spectacular once again. The tail lamps, really slim, integrated. And one of my favorite features recently also from that open GT concept. Here, look at these red Audi rings here. Rather small, but a really cool design element because they're once again illuminated. And this will be a feature of future Audis indeed. Then looking here in the lower part, this is a goes really deep in there look at that so the air is also being channeled from the front to the rear and as for facts and figures 120 kilowatt hours will be the battery delivering a range of around 750 kilometers or 450 miles one electric motor in the rear one in the front over 700 horsepower and four seconds something will be the acceleration figure so very very powerful and as for recharging they use the technology of the Porsche Taycan or the Audi e-tron GT 800 volt structure and that means 270 kilowatt of recharging power maximum so in about 10 minutes you can recharge like 300 kilometers or 190 miles for example here with this interesting charging flap that opens also in a suicide way and yeah you can open it with using the force or trust the audi guy in the background with a remote control well an early prototype vehicle sometimes have very interesting features or also sounds 
that this in here, when the flap is closing, listen carefully. Here, did you hear the last sound? To me, totally Space Invaders, isn't it? Well, you thought the exterior is spectacular. Wait for the interior. You know, it's a quick vehicle, four seconds in the acceleration figure, but where the doors take a little bit longer, <laughs> here in the suicide way, this opening, of course, this gives us a really great look to the interior. This is one of the elements that will not be included in the final vehicle. There we will have the doors in a classic way in the rear. But we have the chance right now to take a great look to this living room atmosphere in the interior. As for suspension, by the way, active air suspension, scanning the road ahead so that the passengers on the inside always have a great comfort level and also rear axle steering because that way we can have this enormous wheelbase at the same time the car is maneuverable. So this is actually the secret then to allow this kind of interior. And the interior materials, this is really exciting. We see a lot of fabric right here. This interior is also without any animal skin. This is very important and definitely Audi is going in that direction as all the other premium manufacturers are doing it right now. Yes, I've won, finally. <laughs> and then here on the inside you can also see a lot of wood is being used. In this case then also sustainably sourced. So there's no wood loss or tree loss overall then on the long run. Interesting also, and there they obviously listen to our community once more. Look at that. This is here a real climate dial. So we, we have this you know, super futuristic vehicle, but we can still touch that and turn it. This is actually really, really cool. Glad that we have it. Otherwise, a lot of you know, screens, capacitive stuff, and also you know, like eye detection, we will soon show that to you. And this has also another special function that is coming up we will be able to turn it also kind of with the force. Then here, look at that. Recycled materials for the floor, like from old PET bottles and also fabric seats. There will of course be seat belts and what you cannot see, the airbags will all be in the seat because at the moment there is no steering wheel. There can be a steering wheel, how that one appears also soon to come. But for that reason, everything is integrated there in this very seat. So it's kind of like an airbag seat. The final vehicle will have seats that are a little bit higher. So you see here, this is not like the most ideal seating position here. I have enough space above my head with this huge panoramic screen and this has such a clean living room atmosphere. And this is also one topic of the future. Cars will be more like living rooms. This is supposed to have level four autonomous driving. What is level four autonomous driving? It's autonomous driving in almost all situations. Just level five is above that, where it says like always and everywhere, and level four is almost everywhere. So because we can also still drive this car ourselves soon to come. This is like, you know, <laughs> once again, like a wooden board. We will also have projection possibility. I would say, let's take a look at that. So we start here in the autonomous driving mode and for example here, I already have a lot of legroom, but we can also move the seats backward, both actually in this more like sleeping or relaxing or lounge position like this. And I can watch the stars, for example, or watch like a cinema here. And that's really cool, actually. But then I cannot reach here the, the haptical controls. Like, ah, oh, what's that? But they have a solution for that. So you can use gesture control then here like this, like you would turn it actually and this is not done by remote control or something. This is really reacting to my hand, so I can turn like left or right, and then it turns the wheel actually like I would turn it myself, and yeah, by using the force. Or use this command like this to toggle the menu, to switch through different controls like the seat control or seat heating or something. So it's a very interesting solution. Um, I'm not sure, it needs to kind of learn your hand movement. Sometimes it works better, sometimes worse. But an interesting solution to still have, you know, like the combination of, you know, something without touch and still offering something that you can touch something depends on. What do you think about this, so that, that solution right here? And while I'm in the sleeping position here, I can also pet the plant. <laughs> so this is a real one, by the way, um, also with a little bit of you know, water drops inside there. And this is like a cartridge. You can also replace it maybe with another plant or something. Um, or with perfume that would also be possible. But I mean, the plan is quite fancy here, isn't it? What's also fancy, 
Well, that might remind ourselves a little bit like, uh, you know, like a dentist experience here, like, uh, <laughs> and you, you know what, what, what I mean when you take a look at this one here. So I can press this button and then the whole middle console goes forward and I have a small mini bar here. This would be then here for water spend. That really reminded me, you know, like, like these dentist chairs where you can have the water right here. And then, yeah, but um, let's rather not think of a dentist experience, but rather like, you know, Let's think of the stars, you know. That's also a good tip when you are in, in the dentist. Just imagine something good like with palm trees and Paradise Island and something. <laughs> you might have heard of these laser TVs where everything is projected. And the same thing is happening here. This wooden panel is used as a screen. You do not have a separate monitor. This is now a, you know, a demo type. And it looks actually kind of crisp and you can have movies on that you can have the gps on that or maybe your favorite music they will also work with personalization so you get in the vehicle and the vehicle oh, oh that's thomas so we'll put on the classic trance tunes for example you know yeah let's do that and also you will have speakers that are just audible for the individual seat and not for everyone that might have yeah that might be a very good solution um, you know for your for the spouse situation you know where you're not really keen on hearing each other's music you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but here, let's focus on this one. You can actually see, a, you know, real movie shots, for example. And then here the GPS and everything is showing kind of a transition. It is kind of sharp, but of course a real monitor would have a better background because you so much still see the wood. I would like to know from you guys, would you rather see this kind of solution or would you rather prefer a classic monitor? It's maybe also the same thing you think at home. This, by the way, here, you can see these, um, these elements right here, and they are being activated by eye tracking. And that really works. It's kind of like, um, yeah, it's very interesting. So at the moment here, trip is selected, but then we have these eye trackers right there. And when I move my eyes to the right side, have you seen that? Music appears, and I can kind of select it then by pressing with my hand in the left panel here. So. This is kind of like a capacitive area. We can also have this here with three different icons, for example, and this could also be very well a Homer Simpson game, like eyes right, music appears, eyes left, trip appears. Eyes right, eyes left, eyes right, eyes left. You see that? <laughs> and when I activate it, it becomes even more clear. Trip here, then I look to the middle, I activate the ambience, look to the right, I can activate the music. So this works really flawlessly. Yes, we have a lot of interesting new features with this vehicle. A lot to, you know, have something to do with the autonomous driving, but come on, after all, we want to drive the car ourselves. At least I want, <laughs> tell me about you. And then also with eye tracking, I look to the symbol there on the left side. This is kind of like a steering wheel symbol. I select once again with a wood panel. And now I can once again use the force and once again, this was not staged with remote control or something. This is a live demo and it worked. And obviously, I've been a very good Padawan and um, <laughs> learned how to control the force. <laughs> so, I have to think about my lightsaber color though. Yeah, I have to do a video on that. But here now, I have the steering wheel and it was an interesting function right there. And this reminds us a little bit of the new <laughs> Tesla Model X and S, the, the yoke, yoke steering wheel, but it's still close on the top part. I think it's also better because you can also grab around like this. And yeah, this kind of feels really racy now. I cannot see so much from the screen behind it now, but I have everything now in my line of sight here with the digital instruments, with a small screen, everything I need basically. And the final seating position will again be a little bit higher so I can see more what's happening on the road. But I would say, Let's take that one out for a spin. I can't? Come on, guys. <laughs> really? Well, if we can't drive ourselves today, damn it, then we can at least show you once more how the steering wheel is being retracted in this case. There was also this other video we recently did with the SkySphere concept, this OpenGT, where the steering wheel had another function. So you can also watch that video then later on when we finished with this one. Um, goodbye, steering wheel. <laughs> oh, I just want to drive you now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but then again, this, this is the coolest thing having now because the wood Rainier returns. There we go. Here, once again, you can see this open room atmosphere with all doors opened. 
And this is missing here, testing the rear bench. And it's actually quite cozy. Um, but the thing is, this is basically now premium economy here with a lot of legroom. But business class or first class, if you want to take it that way, will be in the future the front seats because of the autonomous driving functions. You will have small space in the front and of course you have the view to the front. So what is being the chauffeur seat right now in the rear, this will definitely change with the autonomous EVs in the future. Very interesting automotive industry aspect as well. And this bench that goes all the way through might also have some other um, you know, practical use cases. Um, what practical use cases I could think of right here now? <laughs> and now for you it's time to check out other videos here on Autogefühl with Thomas. For example, the Open GT concept by Audi and the final competitor which is already on the market, the Mercedes EQS. This is also of course one of you know, the competitors of this vehicle we will see in 2024. Will it be called Audi A9? I really hope so. Not sure it will be, but again it's also your task to use the comments what name this car shall have. This is the all-electric G-Class, the EQG. So they are electrifying the iconic model. And this is the very first prototype we see here at IAA Motor Show in Munich, Germany. And you can see here the closed front grille, but in a similar design, a lot of light playing around. In the US, also the illuminated star will be allowed. You can see here the top hood, still in black, contrasting color. It looks kind of almost the same as a normal G-Class, but we see the electrified image definitely. Also, for example, with illumination along the sides here, right there, this will be illuminated at night, for example. 22-inch wheels here still in the concept car style, but they look also very interesting indeed. And it will also feature the very classic leather frame chassis with independent suspension in the front and rigid axle in the rear to be even you know as rough as before. Four electric motors actually so you will be probably able to control the wheels individually so to speak and this will give you great off-road performance due to the big battery pack on the lower part of the vehicle, low center of gravity and that means together with the electric drive a lot of power from the get-go but also very finely tuned to control it. So this one will probably be even more off-road capable than the original version. It will even feature a two-speed gearbox. Let's take a look at the rear and following the typical side also, this looks as rugged as before and as old school as before, like the 1979 model. And what's interesting here at the rear, you can see the spare wheel box. There's not a spare wheel behind it, but this is in the wall box style, so as that you can, for example, store your cables in there. And this is also, once again, leading it to the future here for the EQG. What do you think about this approach? And they will most probably also put one of their big battery packs in it. At the moment, they have one at 90 kilowatt hours, one at 108 kilowatt hours. Because this one here really stands against the wind, it will not be as efficient as the new EQE or the EQS and also in their SUV versions, so they will definitely have less range. But I mean, when the new generation here of the G-Class was introduced, Arnold Schwarzenegger demanded an electric ver version and yeah, they are definitely giving it not only to him, but also to us. You can see here this rooftop and on top of it, when you look from above, you can see a G logo on the top of it and yeah, probably you know, at the end of the day, you will be able to put a roof box in there, for example, for even more luggage capacity and so on. So I think the styling is really, really cool. It has definitely a retro style and I like retro electric cars. You know, we've seen also with the Honda Ionic 5 that people really go for this retro design. It just brings some joy back while still transporting something to the future. And exclusively for you, we could take a look here at the interior as well. Of course, still prototype stage, but we can see what's interesting. It doesn't have this new EQS or EQE hyper, hyper screen setup. It rather has a rather classical G-Class setup. So, and I think I do prefer that. It's not this technical overload. And we can see that on the interior, once again, it's more you know, like the traditional G-Class. and. I think it's pretty cool that we have on the one hand more traditional exterior and interior, on the other hand we have the electrification. Of course this might bring not, you know, might not be so efficient and overall as for the chassis and so on, but after all it's also supposed to be fun, not only sustainable but also fun. 
and I hope we can also see then for example a high grade leatherette on the interior and this one is I think a high grade leatherette at least it looks like it and of course really fancy with this all white interior yeah it might appear a little bit bright and also while driving also with the dashboard it might give reflections in the front windscreen but yeah I'm not sure if this one will come after all but if you would like to see such an interior for the future electric g-class then definitely put it in the comments very very interesting we also have the maybach eqs suv so the more luxurious version with a streamlined look you can also tune into that video and see it there an all electric mercedes maybach this one here is the mercedes eqs suv in the maybach version so Basically two things that are new with this one here. First of all, the all-electric Maybach and also the EQS SUV. So for the EQS and for the EQE, the electric S-Class and the electric E-Class, they will both be SUV versions. So a Mercedes EQS SUV and the Mercedes EQE SUV. So this is the Mercedes EQS SUV in the Maybach trim. So with this typical Maybach grille, vertical fins but all the way closed in this typical Mercedes EQ shape for the electric vehicles but with a standing Mercedes star and what we see here is clearly that the electric vehicles in the Maybach or also in the AMG version as we've now also shown to you in the EQS AMG they are not that different from each other as the combustion engine versions at least I think though what do you think then? Here, you can see here very, very slim headlamps. Here so far in the prototype stage, also with a two-tone paint, typical Maybach. But we also saw that in the EQS, for example, in the non-Maybach version, you can also get two-tone paint, meanwhile. So this is on the same platform as the EQS sedan. Here, 24-inch wheels, if they become reality. Well, meanwhile, this is also not that special to have super large wheels, but they are extremely large, more than, whoa. Maybe you can take you know, your, your mirror in, in, inside there. And then we can see also a stretched roof line, so not this kind of boxy style. This will rather than be the G-Class in the EQ version. Integrated door handles also, they will also then come towards you. The interior is not finished yet, but it will also feature more fabric, even in this Maybach version, so they are more and more going away from the animal skin. It's also good that they also introduced it for the Maybach. Well, the interior is somewhat covered, but you can see it will also feature the MBOX hyper screen, this whole glass panel, and then with the three different screens, of course, then in this case, I guess, included in this top trim level, but here at the moment still covered, but also tune into our EQS episode and you know basically how the interior looks like somewhat. As for the range, we can expect uh, some, you know, somewhat similar figures as we know from the normal EQS sedan. So maximum of like 600 kilometers, 370 miles with a big battery, 108 kilowatt hours net. Maybe they also offer a little bit smaller battery as an entry level trim, but definitely also very streamlined, but just a little bit higher than the normal EQS sedan. So I would like to know from you what you think of bringing this one and some Maybach version and what you think about this big SUV trend in the electric segment. This one will then also somewhat conquer with the Tesla Model X, but they, as I said, will have the EQS SUV and the EQE SUV. Let's follow here back to the back to the back. Here, by the way, interesting also new idea with all the Maybach logos here, but it looks a little bit cheap, doesn't it? So usually I would expect, yeah, just this logo right there, and then this is also a, um, a real one here towards the C pillar. Yeah, the one in the B pillars, rather a little bit cheap, I think. Then here in the rear, you can see also very, very slim light strip, round structures, and that's also what I said about Mercedes design recently. They really focus on the Chinese market and therefore go for more round shapes and not the typical German Mercedes style, as we, for example, know from really beloved models, especially from the 80s and 90s or something, where Audi goes in a different direction, definitely. You can see here Mercedes, but also in the Maybach batch. And very interesting here, this lower area with this diffuser, you can really touch this. So this is, you know, not only behind some closed grill this is actually for real so the interior will also feature a chauffeur seating so single seat setup and we recently saw that with the audi grand sphere concept this maybe like a9 electric or something 
They will also offer a vase on the interior for flowers. So flowers seem to take over the car interiors now. So let me tell you what you think about the new Maybach EQS SUV. See you in the comments. And of course, tune in to the all-electric G-Class. We are also showing you here from IAA Motor Show in Munich. AMG goes electric and the electric Mercedes EQS goes AMG <laughs> with the Mercedes EQS 53. And let's start directly in the front design-wise. They have this vertical fins here, closed grille because you don't need the cooling. The only cooling is in the lower part and adaptive. And the typical EQS face here with the daytime running light. Optional digital light is so-called pixel light with even more elaborated high beam functions. And this car is also equipped with the night package. So we have dark accentuations right here. And also, for example, at the side mirrors. The length is the same as 5 meters 22. Of course, normal EQS comparison. Recently seen our full driving review of the EQS 580. This is the all-way drive model and also the AMG model, the EQS 53 gets all-way drive, that means one electric motor in the rear, one in the front, maximum of 1020 newton meters, that's the peak performance, 3.4 seconds is the acceleration figure, and why is it 53? They say because there's still something coming up, there will be a 63 probably later, which is then even quicker, but 3.4 seconds is of course already supercar alike. As for the wheels, 21 or optional 22 inch you can see it right here in a rather closed or turbine vent design really very massive and this is here the opening for the wiper fluid which gets the formatic plus batch in this case then what does it mean they have changed the orbital drive distribution a little bit that it's even sporty and of course you have even more power at the rear the electric motors are indeed somewhat similar to the normal EQS, but they changed even hardware parts in the electric motors that can just, you know, cope with more performance. Air suspension is standard with the setup of the AMG four-door coupe by, you know, the AMG GT four-door. So it maybe has a similar ride, I don't know, but we of course have the battery, which puts the center of gravity very, very low. Rear axle steering is also standard, up to a degrees of 9 degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels. 10 degrees with the normal EQS won't make such a difference. It reduces the turning circle and makes the car even more agile, especially at lower speeds. Here in the rear, the design clues are this special wing, you know, bringing more downforce here. So that's, of course, not as aerodynamic then as for the efficiency. But we can still expect, I mean, with the combustion engines, when you go four-cylinder, six-cylinder, eight-cylinder, the eight-cylinders have higher consumption, yes. But with the electric vehicles, of course, this one is not as efficient as the, for example, rear-wheel drive only model or as the normal all-wheel drive model from the EQS. But more or less, it won't make such a difference. So with our EQS all-wheel drive test, we had a realistic range of 390 miles or 630 kilometers. We can expect a little bit less than with this one, but this is, of course, still a very good number. Here, design clues in the rear, we have to look closely, actually, because here there are three diffuser-like fins instead of two, and once again, more high-gloss black in the lower end for a little sporty look. I have to say, here in the electric, the EQS, the difference between non-AMG and AMG version maybe not as big, but then, of course, also the driving features, the normal versions are already quite quick. But there are more changes coming up in the interior. Oh, and have you seen here? Wider side spoilers as well and high gloss black sporty style. But what you cannot see at the moment, bigger brake discs here. Usually for electric vehicles, sometimes we don't even use the brake discs. But here with the performance version, they also want to offer performance braking. And optional, you can even get carbon ceramic brakes here it's of course even more expensive yeah maybe for the race track or something <laughs> yeah and with the dynamic plus package by amg you can even top up the high, the, the top speed to then maximum of 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles per hour if you need that for example for the race track the battery <laughs> placed here in the lower floor it always gets the big battery 108 kilowatt hours net of course you need that big battery here for the amg model 
charging here behind that flap 22 kilowatt ac maximum or 200 kilowatt dc and they made that intentionally other manufacturers went from 800 volt infrastructure inside of the vehicle and then can have a higher loading peak they went 400 volt but said that's actually better for the whole charging process because we only go 200 kilowatt max but then hold it for a longer period of time so that at the end of the day the, far, the charging is faster. So they told me that if they went for a higher peak the overall process would have been longer and we have already tested it off camera it's actually possible to go from 10 to 80 percent in 30 minutes at a high power fast charger. Looking at the interior, the dashboard would be standard with articles or a high grade leatherette that looks also quite sleek. As for the screens, instruments, they are off at the moment, 12.3 inch for the digital instruments. In the middle part, 7.7 .7 inch for the hyper screen and then the passenger screen, 12.3 inch again. And as you see, it's also interesting to look at it when they are turned off because then you can see this huge black panel design. The hyper screen is standard for the 580 EQS and also here for the true AMG model. A standard EQS would still offer this smaller S-Class alike screen, which then is just in the middle. The AMG model here, the 53, gets the AMG steering wheel. It will not be available in the EQS AMG line. If you want that fancier looking steering wheel, otherwise it has this slot design in the lower part and um, looks a little bit less sporty here in the middle parts. This is here split then in this area. So not in the AMG line, only here in the true AMG model, but you have the same capacitive buttons I had some talks about the capacitive buttons, by the way, and they said it's not about cost cuts. They do it for design reasons and for functionality. And we all agree here that the functionality with capacitive buttons is worse. It looks fancy, but it's harder to control than with real buttons. And I think it's a mistake that they went for this way. The grip, however, we know the steering wheel from like CLS facelift, E-Class facelift and so on. It has a very good size and a very good steering control, I can already say it, right, say it right now. And here you will be able to pick the driving modes then and it will also be illuminated when, you know, the functionality and so on. These seats here at the moment have the optional animal skin package, which is not fitting to their sustainable luxury claim. However, which is good, standard on this model here, the EQS AMG, will be the microfiber on the inside and a high-grade article leatherette on the outside, so at least they make that one standard. We also have the shots from here from the AMG line, which we shot for you in the studio earlier. So this is actually a similarity between AMG line and the true AMG model. And even the steering wheel can also be at a later stage offered with a whole microfiber fiber wrap. So the EQS AMG is then a good possibility actually to get it all animal free. So if you maybe in the family have discussions and say like, why would you spend the extra money for the AMG model? You can say like, yeah, well, the AMG model, I need that faster stuff because then I can also make it animal free. So it's a very good argument maybe for, you know, for discussions at home. Oh, and a classic detail should not be missing in a sporty vehicle, these aluminum pedals or aluminum. No changes for the rear bench. You have enough space here on the inside both headroom and also for the legroom. We cannot get inside today because it's the very first show car and it's basically sealed off. At least we could manage that they open the windows for us so we can take a sneak preview on the inside. But in our usual Mercedes EQS review, you can take all the different uh, interior details and so on. So we'll also link this video so you can tune in there. What is also special here for the AMG model is the sound design. We have experienced it in a normal EQS that you can already pick three different sound profiles. For example, when you're accelerating or braking that you have different sound experience. Here for the AMG model, they will have a completely different sound experience. And also for other things you might activate, click here, click there, for charging and so on, that you get a unique sound experience. When we can drive this vehicle, we will keep you updated with that. So far, please tune into our EQS 580 driving review. See you there if you haven't already seen it. And of course, very soon here, really excited to drive this one. I'm not John Rambo, I'm still Thomas. <laughs> but this is here a showcase by Mercedes how we could possibly control vehicles in the future by measuring the waves in our brain. And you can see here, this is actually really measuring my brain waves. 
and it can actually detect my focus. So this is not working via eye tracking, which we've recently seen in an Audi concept, where you can really just have the eye tracking, see what you're doing, and then select something like this. This is supposed to have no interface whatsoever, but rather a you know, non-physical human-machine interface. This is very interesting. Let's see if this is working. So we have this you know, showcase here, this visual box from the AVTR concept by Mercedes. And this is actually here showing that my brain is connected to the vehicle now. And what they want to show is that you really have a connection to the vehicle you can also actually feel. So we start here in the middle. You can see these three lines. And what I'm supposed to do now is form a triangle with my brain waves. So just like, you know, imagine there would be a triangle. And let's see if I can get that to work. I have to focus now that I'm just imagining a triangle. Still trying. Oh, now I got it. Now I got it. So, and then the car activates. I feel a heartbeat in the seat and also this heartbeat here in the central control. This is basically the steering wheel. We've already shown it to you in the Vision AVTR. AJ has actually even driven this car himself. And then the same is happening then here in the front. I can pick different modes and for example focus on the middle one. And once again imagine that there would be a triangle and they have this used there. Ah, okay. I was a little bit um, faster here now. And so I could activate like a certain driving or flying mode here. This is inspired by the um, movie Avatar, of course, as you could see maybe already from the visuals. And just as with the Audi concept, we could activate single things with eye tracking. Here it's really over the brain waves that I can just imagine something to be happening. There you can see how I imagined this triangle again. And this is a first concept for a future interface where just imagine what you want to do. Like imagine I want to play a certain song maybe or imagine I want to get to a certain destination. Then the car automatically knows, oh, Thomas wants to, you know, go to this place, to this city or wants to find a vegan restaurant or something and automatically drives me there without, you know, having to type in something to spell something out, just detecting by the brainwaves. And this is somehow cool, of course, but on the other hand, of course, it's a little bit frightening as well. And here, by the way, what they also want to show is to integrate like, a, you know, gaming scenario. So, yeah, maybe for later time. So this I'm controlling actually now with the uh, controller, but in future, this could also be controlled by my brainwaves. Um, and here's the same thing. At the moment, they have this scenario here. Oh, I'm getting faster and faster, obviously. So I, I opened basically this barrier here. Oh, <laughs> no, I drove through it. I got to practice this one, right, in Gran Turismo. So the faster you get, the more focused you are, actually, the faster you can do these operations. And I've been testing it for quite a while now. And in the beginning, you, you saw it took a little bit more time. And the more practice you get, the more focus you have. And the detector here really gets, oh, OK, Thomas is focused on this kind of task and then the next step is going further. So we also have more videos of the Mercedes AVTR concept. You can tune into these or, for example, the Audi concept recently with the A9 e-tron, as I called it, how the eye tracking, for example, is working. So future interfaces of the vehicles here evolving. What do you think about it? Cool or frightening? This is a 50-year-old Volkswagen T2 Microbus, one of the very popular ones, but it has been retrofitted, so to speak. So the exterior is really classic in this typical T2 style, but the interior is completely different with all new materials that are leading towards the future and also very interesting future concept. This was rebuilt by Continental, one of the big automotive suppliers, and they are actually supplying the interior parts, a lot of for some manufacturers, most of the interior parts. And this will be a very extensive tour on all the future materials and also functionalities of the vehicles that are to come in your future cars. And one of the very spectacular things I'm going to start with, look at that. This is a high-grade leatherette material. It feels really, really soft. Looks almost, you know, like the highest grade of animal skin, but it's not animal skin. It's completely animal free. The whole car is animal free. And the special thing here is, I mean, I would never do that, you know, usually. And I can really write here, 
Autogefühl mit diesem Pen hier. Und ich meine, no one would ever do that with such a precious pillow, but this is just, you know, just a towel with some disinfection. And you can see here, you can completely wipe it clean. So this material is also called by them stay new. And the thing is, you know, in that way you can use more. Look at that. This is really amazing. Wow. You can use more bright materials on the interior, for example, also here than on the seats or at the steering wheel. You know it, maybe that so far you had like bright leatherette seats, for example, and then you have some blue jeans, new blue jeans, and then you have some blue stains on it and you cannot get rid of them. This is going to end right here now with that one. So you can see you can easily go for bright materials then and still wipe them clean easier. This will also be no problems when you have kids, for example, and they spill some ice cream over it or something. Wipe it clean and that's it. And when I take a seat here at the driver's seat, or I also can imagine then a bright steering wheel, for example, here in a concept shape. And even further going, this one here, it looks 100% like real wood. It feels absolutely like real wood, but this is like, like my, uh, you know, like my um, desk at home. I have the very same desk at home actually, but my desk at home is real wood and this one is not real wood. It looks like it, but it's not. Because the problem is, here at the dashboard, when you would use real wood and you have the airbags underneath it, it would like, you know, split all over the place and would be really dangerous. So this is an artificial material that can be combined with airbags underneath anywhere basically. At the same time, it gives you this wooden atmosphere so a very good combination by the way there is also you know, a very good combination of this old school like the normal old school shifting lever right here and then new school so to speak because we have here behind the steering wheel we have the tablet integrated here we go so we have integrated this tablet here as a digital instruments for example so there we go this is done Android based as well. So this is also an interesting integration how materials can actually house some more electronics. And we'll find more of that later on in the interior in the back. And this vehicle is also equipped with a surround view camera system. So in any direction I can click through the cameras or also have, it's not a T2 bus here in this case. No, rather like a, like a, a bigger sprinter or something. And here you can see I can also then <laughs> scroll around this with a three-dimensional view yeah but so far i think the best approach here is that we can actually also have a retro old vehicle with new technology on the inside because we all love these old vehicles from the exterior styling but still want modern comfort for example and this living room atmosphere look at that here the coffee machine you want any coffee guys any coffee here maybe cornelius or cameraman needs some because he's been keeping up with the work here at the IIA Motor Show all the time. So if I move back to the lounge seat right here, this is an also high-grade leatherette and next to this wood-looking material once again. And then you can have this lounge atmosphere. And here, by the way, this one here is a different surface. It also feels like leatherette. But this is also a new compound which is extremely breathable. So this will also, although it's a slick surface, it will stay cool in summertime and this is of course also very important here this is the same service but just with the perforated structure this will give even better breathability and you can see you have a yeah plants and cars this is a thing now definitely we've seen it with audi we've heard it from mercedes with their maybach concept and yeah plants are definitely making a comeback to cars you know um, it has been something in the vw beetle in the past and of course also in the um, microbus especially um you know 60s 70s and so on here on the other side i want to show you some something more we have materials that can actually house functionality basically these are touch pads which are hidden inside the materials and then you can activate the seat heating here and this is then for this area and they print the heating actually in the surface so it's actually directly at the surface so that also saves space and it also gets warmer way easier and quicker than when it would be hidden in the seat then look at these windows you maybe know from the mercedes sl um, there is, is this electrochromatic function, so you don't need any physical shade. This is basically inside the glass and then you can have a different percentage, percentage of shade either looking way all the way through or then close it as a shade and there might be no other um, you know, animations and so on and so on.
there you go. <laughs> this is very funny, man. I think the kids will probably play around with that all the time, like open, close, open, close, open, close, and so on. And you might have seen the ambient lighting here at the top part. Um, this is mainly like a, like a tile graphic, but you can see here, you can, of course, pick the ambient lighting or also hit it accordingly to the music. And you can see no visual speakers in this interior here. Actually, all the speakers, there's a cooperation with Sennheiser, so Continental and Sennheiser are cooperating. And all the speakers are basically hidden behind here in the lower part. Yet at the same time, you can have a sound where you don't know where is it actually coming from. And this is also a very interesting approach because when you have speakers somewhere visibly, it's an additional part and sometimes we see like you put 30 different speakers in the car, you need a lot of cables all around. In this case then here, you can just hide them somewhere, put them in one, one spot and that's actually it. And then of course also have the according ambient lighting there. Yeah, you can maybe also hear something of the music here now. And the funny thing is it sounds like surround atmosphere, but at the same time, I cannot see any visible speakers. So this is also one of the very new, interesting technologies. So what we can um, take from that is that definitely... Uh, that, that's enough music, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, they helped me with uh, playing the music here. Um, well, uh, one thing I forgot, look at that here. So we have this wooden material, so just saw it here. You can also have them, you know, even this wooden materials with illumination in the background. So definitely very spectacular. And the good thing is here, so... To me, it shows that we can combine retro exterior with new interiors. And especially, and also, we have sustainable interiors. They have less use of resources. Definitely no animals in the car in the future. And by the way, we have even more samples right here. So this one is, for example, like a, looks like a brown animal skin, but also has a you know, very soft texture. And this one with even more reused materials. This one here is actually made from coffee waste or coffee residues. So you have like uh, four cups of coffee per one square meter, very interesting. And this one rather goes in this cork direction, it has you know more like, like a stickier surface. So also interesting that you can have different haptics to that. This is also a cork surface, but this one here is for example a little bit slicker. You might say, ah, yeah, okay, there's no animal in the car, but then there's more oil use or something because of these materials. The recycling share is getting higher and higher and higher. And for example, for this material here, you have like 80% recycling share. So they're also trying to get rid of the oil-based products and completely by using natural materials, for example, or also reuse materials. And you can also nowadays, we see it, for example, with floor mats and so on, have a 100% recycling use of that. So also progression in this case. And you also have to think about the amount of oil that is being used to produce a seat. In comparison to that, what we burn as petrol, for example, or will be used for heating and energy production is nothing in comparison, actually. Yet, at the same time, we should, of course, try to get full circle at some point. But this one is already a step in a great direction. What do you think? Would you like to own this one here, a T2 with such an interior? I would say, well, I would certainly do so. A small electric vehicle in a retro design from Aura. This is a Chinese manufacturer belonging to the Great Wall Motors Corporation. Aura is their brand all electric and also for younger target group. This is the Aura Cat. You can see here, small electric vehicle, 4 meters 25, 167 inches. And you can see the round headlamps, kind of like a Chinese mini version, I, I would say, or maybe like a mix of a Beetle and a mini, something like this. You have carbon fiber visuals here in the lower part, here in the red, in the so-called GT trim, <laughs> here as well. And it actually has a decent range also, depending on the battery size you pick, around 300 to 400 kilometers and 200 to 250 miles. That's very interesting. We see more and more big EVs, but here now finally we can see another small electric vehicle coming to the market. 18 inch wheels in this case in here and also one more time here, carbon fiber visuals at the side and also the wheels here with a contrasting red. And also in the side profile, you can see even more retro styling, more round shapes. 49 or 63 kilowatt hours net is the battery capacity. So two versions there are actually available. We can see here chrome frame in the lower part, a little easier trim in the upper part. And towards the rear, we have actually here some kind of shoulder forming and 
once again a GT batching right there. So interesting styling and this is really small car segment but even more exciting will be how much space we will have in the interior. Light strip here goes all the way across but is integrated in the rear shield that's very interesting and actually a very clean design and here if you don't go for the sportier gt model this one would be the base version but you can see you can also get a contrasting roof color here in white and also with this you know greenish blue mixture and the most interesting thing is you can take a look at the exterior color and this one here has a fitting interior to that then also with the um yeah it's a little bit more greenish then and also then here the white contrast. So really interesting to correspond exterior and interior that works very well. So especially to the finishing of the materials and also to the coloring, they pay a lot of attention. This one here, by the way, front wheel drive around 170 horsepower and 8.5 seconds is the acceleration figure. And you can see here, this is also the GT model, but in a different color. So now a final look here at the, it's also the GT trim, but then again, in a different color. It is in metallic paint, but has some kind of, um, let's say, matte appearance. But this one works very well here, once again, with the carbon fiber looks. And definitely, yeah, you remember the the mini John Cooper works? Yeah, definitely has something of that type, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, we're also famous for our turning indicator check, and this one here also nice integration all the way around the around around the headlamps. There's <laughs> also a cool styling, isn't it? Let's directly take a look at the trunk area, and we do have a electric tailgate here, and actually a substantial loading sill. Not too much space, but it's also a small vehicle, but long enough definitely for the city and so on. Some more space underneath right here. And let's take a look at the interior. You know, as a German, I always pay attention to panel gaps. And this one here is actually, you know, very interesting. So not big gaps and also the door closing sound is very solid. And this only the small car segment. Let's take a look here at the interior. So here we have a soft touch at the inside of the doors on the top part and then we have here this kind of neoprene style structure. We have it also in new Mercedes cars for example. And then here this you know, structured materials on the inside. And in this case then this GT trim with a black and red mix here. And this is all leather red, high grade leather red. So once again an animal free interior from a Chinese manufacturer and here once again, also very interesting surfaces they use. So what are they doing here? We cannot drive the car yet. We will do it at a later stage. But what we can already see so far is that they use really good premium materials. Also here on the seats, no one could mistake this one here saying like, oh, this is like animal skin. You could, you could actually think it is, but it's not. So high grade as for this. Oh, we even have red seat belts. I'll show you very soon. But first of all, let me take a seat and see about the comfort. Once again, this is a small vehicle and especially when you're 1m86 or 6 with one like me, often there's not much comfort in, in, uh, in the small vehicles. And you know, so far, it's actually quite reasonable. Still have some headroom, although we have a panoramic roof here and also with rear switches, but yeah, it's not powered here at the moment. Steering wheel up and down. This is also um, a good quality test. Um, yeah, obviously we cannot move it in and out. Yeah up and down only yeah this is something they should offer that you can also put the steering wheel steering wheel towards you i like that, that they still use real buttons here at the steering wheel that's good actually and then there's a 20.5 inch screen so the digital instruments and the main infotainment screen is actually one let's take a detailed look at that interior overview once again very cool materials for the dashboard and also here for this middle area everything structured and somewhat soft touch vents go all the way through and indeed yeah the Chinese mini here we can see they borrowed the design from mini definitely but the upper part this one looks more unique with the screen it goes through where well, it is two screens yes however it's interesting here on the right side you have then the touch and um, yeah an own infotainment system something we have not seen so far it's actually uh, reasonably quick as well and take a look here at the GPS for example so this one um, looks rather you know Android based 
also in the prototype stage. Cannot see too much there yet though. On the left side we see the digital instruments and when we hit the brakes this one appears then and then there will be of course the digital speed and so on and so on. Once again, here at the steering wheel we have the real buttons to control, for example, also the cruise control and so on. And on the inside here in the lower part, there are USB-A chargers next to here, 12 volt power supply. And cup holders in the front part. And this then here, an interesting shifting lever. So we just turn it, know it from Jaguar Land Rover cars, for example, or for also from, from Genesis and so on. Electric handbrake and then inductive charging pad. Some more space underneath, so they rather kept it, kept it simplified and with a you know simple, easy, and accessible design here for the interior. And when you think about the comparison to the Mini, this one's supposed to hit the market here at around thirty thousand euros. So definitely a more affordable choice. Interior in the rear, then here hardback at the rear doors, and following here again the black and the red scheme. By the way, this leatherette here is not a very slick surface. It has some kind of, it's like a mix of leatherette and microfiber on the very, very top surface, so very interesting. It um, makes it a little bit more cozy in winter times, for example. Then you can see here hardly any middle tunnel because it's an all electric con uh, concept, of course. And let's take a look. It's a short vehicle, but yet I have the leg room as in a, you know, compact vehicle with combustion engine, which would be like 20 or 30 centimeters longer or something. I sit relatively low, but also headroom wise I fit in here so indeed considering the length of that vehicle or the shortness of this vehicle you have really a lot of room here inside even on the middle seat is actually quite plush to sit on you can actually drive with five tall adults in here and it's not um, that uncomfortable so that's actually quite astonishing and also here with the GT batching here stitching here on the insert on the head restraints. So what we see here from the Chinese manufacturers at the IIA Motor Show in Munich is first of all they always offer a lot of legroom. They have great materials on the inside. Infotainment system wise we cannot test it here yet all in the prototype stage. We really have to check if they are actually faster. They promise very fast chipsets. Also a Qualcomm chip then here and from a new generation in this vehicle. We'll see at a later stage then how that one plays out. This will be very interesting and also if they can actually catch up with the driving dynamics and so on. Here with the electric vehicle the thing is, you always have the batteries in the lower part of the vehicle. That always brings the, lo the center of gravity very low and usually promises great driving um, experience. So when the Chinese manufacturers build electric vehicles, they do not have to invest that much in driving dynamics as they would do with the combustion engine models. So this will be a very interesting test in the future to come.